If you were thinking there is some familiarity between the 2018 and 2019 National Women's League final, then you would be correct. Canterbury have won by three goals to two. Once again, the Canterbury United Pride face Northern Lights for the ultimate prize, the National Women's League trophy. Last year, it was the Pride who travelled north to Auckland to recapture the silverware. Will the Northern Lights be able to return the favour at English Park this afternoon? Who will emerge victorious? The Canterbury United Pride or Northern Lights? Another National Women's League season draws to a close and after 13 rounds of action, we have found the top two sides in the country. It is the Canterbury United Pride up against the Northern Lights, who will be crowned 2019 champions. Yes, good afternoon and welcome into English Park here in the Garden City of Christchurch. I'm Narelle Sindos in the company of former Football Ferns goalkeeper Rebecca Rolls. And this definitely has a deja vu feel to it, but what's capping off a great women's season? Definitely. Look, I mean, it's been such a tight table the whole way through and quite odd when uh, Mainland has, has lost a game and, and Northern hasn't and yet they sort of qualified second and that was only really decided last week after a lot of rained out games. So we're in for a big one today. And you have to go back to 2012 since Canterbury haven't been in a fire. What, what has made them such a powerhouse side to be reckoned with? Yeah, the, well, both sides, I think, have just got a really good programs in place. I've had, through the years, a good blend of senior professionals that have now moved on and paved the way for some junior leaders to come through into some really good coaching and structure. So, and, and, you know, Auckland haven't been far behind and at various times other teams. So good competition, good pathway. Well, this is the fourth time that these two sides have met. In the final, let's go to Northern Lights coach now, Shane Hi, I'm Shane Burma, coach of the Northern Lights, and today we'll be lining up as a 3-5-2 with Lily Alfield in goal, Claudia Bunge, Anika Middendorf, and Mackenzie Barry across our back three with Liz and Saskia Vospa as our wing backs. Uh, in the midfield today we'll have Maggie Jenkins, Chloe Knott and Arabella Maynard, and up top Ava Pritchard and Kelly Brown. Uh, in terms of key players, I think we've got a lot of strength across the across the park, so it's it's going to be a bad team performance today, and hopefully, a couple of individuals shine to give us that cutting edge today. So, um, best of luck to the Pride, and uh, looking forward to this game. Cheers. Shane was actually assistant coach here at the Pride for three years, and he talked about some of those key players needing to stand up, and he's got to be talking about their defender, Claudia Bunn. She's had a whirlwind the last few months in her football career. Well, she has. I mean, she was capped football firm for the first time ever she started. Um, she had a really good game, I thought, against China. She looked really composed. I mean, she'll be looking to link up with the Kelly Browns and Ava Pritchards of the team. You know, they're strong across the park, so big challenge for Mainland to contain them today. And we haven't seen a lot of the Northern Lights. What sort of style do you expect them to play and maybe how they're going to approach this match? Yeah, with well, our experience, like I said, I think they'll be they'll be solid at the back, but they'll want to push forward and counter as much as possible because they've got some good strength in the midfield with Liz Savage and Chloe Knott. So, yeah, exciting all over. Well, let's go to the home side now. Here is their coach, Alana Gunn. Hey, I'm Gunny. I'm the coach of Canterbury United Pride. Today we're going to come out into a 1-3-5-2. Uh, we're going to be really aggressive on the press, with led by our two strikers, Gabby Rennie and Nik Nikola Dominikovic. We have a very creative midfield, um, which will be led by 65-capped um, Whitney Hepburn, and then our back three will be led by captain Rebecca Lake. Uh, we're really looking forward to this match. Um, we haven't managed to beat Northern so far this season, um, with round one then beating us at home 3-1, and then a couple of weeks ago a nil all draw. So um, it's teeing up to be a fantastic final, and um, we're looking forward to hopefully making five from seven. Hope you enjoy the match. Yeah, well, five from seven, that is the aim. But one player that you have to really watch out for in this pride side is their striker, Gabby Rennie. She's got a lot of pace up front and very dangerous. She is. I mean, she's got six goals already in the competition. And I'm a little surprised to see Brittany Lee Nicholson isn't starting, so perhaps coming on as an impact. But, look, Gabby's pace, I think, is the main weapon she has. And just watching her warm up, she's got some, a pretty good shot. So I'm expecting big things. Well, we're getting close to kickoff now. Can you see this being decided within the 90 minutes? I can. My pick is there'll, there will be a result before... Uh, yeah, so we don't have to go to extra time, so that's what I'm looking forward to. All right, thank you so much, Rebecca. We'll let you get up to commentary, and of course, it's a very warm welcome to Glenn Lama. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Narelle, and an absolute pleasure to be here for this final in 2000 and.
19. It's going to be the Northern Lights in the light blue, the Canterbury United pride in the red and the black. Here is our referee, Anna Maria Keeley. She's been around a long time, New Zealand's best women's referee, has refereed at World Cups. <laughs> set and underway in the grand final it's going to be the northern lights with the first possession they are playing into quite a strong breeze in this first half so that will be interesting to note here at english park so canterbury united pride with the breeze in this first half these two teams have met twice this season first occasion back on October the 19th, Northern won in Christchurch by three goals to one. And then these two teams just met two weeks ago, and it was a nil all draw. Straight away, Northern Lights swing on to attack. Canterbury United Pride hosting the final here. Because they finished top qualifier after the 12 matches in the regular season. And they did lose one game to Northern. Northern actually finished undefeated, but five of their 12 games were draws, so that's why they have to travel down to Christchurch for this clash today. Cleared away there by Chloe Jones for Canterbury United, but uh, strong start here for North Harbour base team full of Forest Hill Milford players and Glenfield Rovers players. Bunch with a good throw. I must say it's uh, really good to see a number of the players that went to the under 17 World Cup last year in Uruguay, where New Zealand, of course, finished a famous third place in that tournament. Nine of that squad are in this match here today going to be a goal kick. player so it will be Canterbury United so just keep an, keep an eye on that breeze it has been blowing quite strongly down the pitch for the last half an hour 40 minutes or so Canterbury United will want to build forward for a bit of territorial dominance if they can find some Front here, Anika Mittendorf. She is one of the nine players. It's in that New Zealand under 17 team. Mittendorf, number four here. She's got a bit of space too. Good pass. Here's a chance. Early chance. Oh, that pass just sliding past Kelly Brown up front there for Northern, but that was a good surge into the penalty area. Pride survive. It's a good, tense play so far from Northern Lights. It's going to be a goal kick with Tomanokovic over there disputing possession. So good start here for Northern. They made a, a nice positive start. It's a touched on that undefeated this season. Good young side. In fact, both teams chock full of good young talent which is good to see New Zealand women's football good crowd here too at English Park supporting the local team hoping they can go back to back in fact that will be the if uh, Canterbury United could do it, it'll be the fifth title in six years which would be a marvellous achievement Brown it was, and Jones over there having a crack at the ball. 
Rebecca, it's a blustery old day. It's always challenging playing into the breeze, isn't it? It is, Glenn. Thank you. So far, this game has been played inside the Canterbury United Pride half, and now there's a chance for them to surge forward. And it's Rennie. Elfield not getting a lot of distance. You can see the, the breeze holding the ball up. I think that breeze looks to have picked up just in the last 10 minutes or so, I think. And I think Lily would have wanted a slightly bit of contact on that, but safety first and, and uh, went and have a throw. Yeah, two all whites, two all whites, two football ferns players in this Northern Lights team. Lily Elfield, the goalkeeper. And Claudia Bunge, number six, the captain of this Northern Lights side. Strong header coming in from Gilchrist. It's played forward there by Herman White. He's got it back again. Hepburn. There's a little bit of trouble clearing their lines here. You can see the frustration on Saskia Bosper's face. She's played a pass that someone didn't read. So they still find themselves under pressure here. And, and I think Wayne Lander will be really wanting to make the most of this. Gilchrist with throw in. Oh, heels of a handball go unanswered. It's a big contest for the ball already in this match. Strong challenge there. Well won by Maggie Jenkins, and that's a great ball forward. Defending coming across there, Rebecca Lake. It needed to be nice and authoritative that play. Excellent counter there by Northern. I think um, yeah, Mainland were lucky to get away with that one. Well, about a couple of nice surges on this left hand side so far, Northern. North with the throw in. Savage. It's getting pushed off the board there by Vandermeer. But there's some good contests are touched on. These two have had some great battles. Of course, last year's final went to extra time. That will be a Canterbury United throw in. Yeah, slight misunderstanding there from Liz Savage, but you're right. I think that left hand side is, is going to be uh, balling away all game, actually. Just holding possession. Too ambitious from them so far is Mittendorf. Jenkins, it was trying to control the ball and, and what? Canterbury United just not able to hold the ball for long periods in this match so far. No, I th and I think they'll want to do better at that, actually. And this turf's got quite a run on it. It's quite a fast turf, so they really need to make sure their passes hit targets, so, or it's going to be a bit back and forth with position as we see Mainland pushing forward again. It's a bit of space this time. That's a good run. Coming in from Dominokovic. Throw in there. Gabby Rennie, one of the nine players, number seven here, who's... That wonderful experience in Uruguay last year, Gabby Rennie, and she's uh, been a sharpshooter for Canterbury United this season. Six goals in the 12 games. She's only 18 years of age. <laughs> Rennie was the target there. Not a bad option to let that one slide through, but no one on the end of it. No, it was a, it was a shame, actually. It's quite innovative. Um, and, yeah, Gabby's been in the squad, I think, four years already, which is, makes it seem like she should be a lot older than that, but huge future. Incredible that this is her 34th game for Canterbury United. She's only 18. It's amazing. She's been playing at a decent level for a long time now, despite still being a teenager. It's a nice play for Fraser.
Good Chloe Knott. Chloe Knott, she's uh, made a strong start. That defensive midfield position. Phil Christ again taking no risks. Had to scramble it away there. Good pressure put on by Chloe Knott. Savage and Vandermeer having a good battle, and it's Savage who's got the ball. Dangerous ball played into the penalty area. Yeah. Foyle has it. Savage won that battle, but I think she would have been disappointed there weren't a few more bodies in the box there for that ball, and it was um, hung in the air for a while, and, and in the end, quite easy for Una Foyle to collect. Well, Foyle, interesting, because Canterbury United have not named a specialist keeper on their subs bench today. Always a touch risky, that strategy. It definitely is, as often the time when you actually need one is when you don't name one. So they'll be hoping Una stays fit the whole game. Vandermeer. Well, those two are having a great battle, aren't they, already? Vandermeer and Savage. Chris nudges it forward, but no red shirt anywhere near that one. Not good play from her again. Over, get across. This is Lake. Offside is the call. It's going to be a free kick for Northern Lights. Uh, just drifting forward, Lara Wall. The opportunity for Northern here to reset and, and set something up going forward. And, and Chloe not already having a, a really calming influence on the game, I think. It, it, when it could be quite scrambly in a final and, the, and quite an aerial ball, she's uh, brand more experienced. Obviously, uh, being one of the many players that's headed to the States on a, a scholarship. I think Georgetown was her university. So, um, yeah, really seeing the benefit of that from her and um, you know, having a good senior impact on this team. important from Gilchrist again. These two teams very even in these first 12 minutes. There's not much in it for sure. Oh, must have taken just a no deflection. So Canterbury United ball. One for Rennie to chase. Let's just chuck, tuck in, tuck in. Well, Bunch has been the dominant force in these first 12 minutes. Every time the ball's gone near her, she's won it. Now, this is dangerous. Control required, and that's well done by Bunch again. Not in there, trying to win the ball for the Northern Lights team, and United Pride still have it. Reflected off Barry, out of play, so this is better from Canterbury United, just muscling up a little bit in the midfield. Yeah, they've got quite a presence there now, and it's sort of starting to settle in there. And I see Vandermeer looming up, keeping quite wide and high out here, so perhaps they're looking for a switch opportunity. Not clears it away. Kelly Brown, the referee's going to award a free kick to Canterbury United. Actually, quite a dangerous spot here with this wind, I think. Yeah, you can really swing it in, and that wind they hoist the ball and make it awkward for the keeper. Elfeld and or Northern Lights. Like Jones on the ball. Ava, just drop in. Ava, drop in. Yeah, Elfeld will want to keep a high line here, I think, otherwise uh, that wind will just let it drift and it'll be tricky for her. She looks like she's doing that. Jones is going to swing it in. 
It's just off target. Lily Elfield, uh, someone else, Louisiana State, I think she went to, but she was a feature in the 2014 under 20s, I think, and uh, recently a football fan, as you said. Oh, she's from Christchurch originally as well. It's nice play. Oh, just unable to be controlled there by Mittendorf. She was the captain, of course, of the under-17 team last year. Yeah, she did a great job. See Canterbury throw. It's not playing forward again. Jenkins and Pritchard chasing it through. It's Lake coming in downfield. So strikers, Northern Lights have. Ava Pritchard, five goals this season. The goal scoring has been shared around this Northern Lights team a bit. A real standout sharpshooter in their side. Yeah, I think Kelly Brown five as well. Kelly Brown coming from Wybock or uh, Hamilton. So they've some definite weapons up front and both really quick, which I think is um, the idea behind that pairing. Well, it's good to have options, isn't it? In many ways, it makes it harder to defend when you've got goals, multiple goal scoring threats in your side. Wasper with the throw in. And get another opportunity, she will. She doesn't muck around either. Not. It's a good cross. And there's a saw just going across the face. And the Northern Lights created two pretty decent chances in the first 15, first 16 minutes now. The excellent ball there by Chloe Notch. She, she, she could have uh, put it in earlier, but chose to wait, which is a good decision, I think. That's encouraging from Northern Lights, and they've uh, made a good start to this game. And... Yeah, good timing of the run in by the strikers here, and unfortunately, it just didn't quite get enough on it. Make sure we track runners. Dorford is playing back forward again. It's nicely touched by Jenkins. Gives Brown one to chase. Kelly Brown, of course, a former Waikato player. Good North, I guess, is part of that FFDP program, Rebecca. Yeah, she's in, in, in the, as you said before, quite a few on this game, um, showing that that pathway is really producing the goods. Yeah, very much so. Majority of this Northern Lights team is part of that program. Ooh. A little push. Mac, well done. Picked up, so Gabby Rennie concedes the free kick. Surge forward here by Mainland. Coming forward nicely, got a good wave on there. It's good defending. No yeah. risks. Bunge again. Safety first. Absolutely. Don't take any risks when it's down that end of the field and there's a good roll on the ball. Chloe not will not to be fouled on that occasion. Player. It's a goal kick. Kelly, great work. Well done. There's a tentative signal there by uh, Anna Marie Kelly. I, I thought it was a corner as well, but um, it's got a nod from the linesman. Of course, the assistant is on the far side of the field here. Oh, 
the alpha. Just, uh, I think it was buried from a little bit of pressure with that uh, goal kick, but trying to play out from the back, which I think is positive, and, and it's unfortunate it didn't quite hit the mark there, but um, good intent from Northern. It's probably a better option than playing it long from the keeper in these high wings. He's at one chase through, but Alfield is down and secures that one. He's off her line quickly, she's very experienced and, and was part of the Football Fern squad uh, before the uh, World Cup in Canada in 2015. And, and I think it was unlucky. I think that with a couple of injuries and probably would have been in the team. Our referee does an order handball call again. Right in front of him too. So Gilchrist comes forward. Tough one there for Vandermeer to keep in the field of play. Yeah, right idea from him and Watt. Just wanted to keep the momentum moving forward, but Northern throw eventuates, and uh, Mittendorf for that enormous throw of hers. Great sort of thing to have in your toolbox. It's a nice play from Fraser. It's one for Brown to chase. Been good defending from both teams so far. Yeah, it has. The strikers have had to really make the most of their opportunities that they're being mopped up, and um, that's happening at both ends, which is it's good from a defensive point of view. Um, strikers are getting frustrated, but um, Kelly Brown looking dangerous when she gets his ball through. Ready. One for Lara Wall, the chase. Got good pace. Vospa, that's a good tackle from Vospa. Really it's been a real feature of the game so far, the defending from both teams. So let's give Vospa here the captain. high off this artificial turf quite hard to bring it down one touch football on occasions is not again proves strong in those one-on-one -on -one situations they're really strong i just like to see both teams getting the ball on the ground a bit more i think it's a bit more flow going through it's uh as you say very hard to control there's a bouncy turf for the fast run so i think we'll see a more flowing game when um, everyone relaxes and it happens a bit more well morel sideline for us as well i mean that typical kind of finals performance from both teams so far. I don't want to concede too much. No, I think you're exactly right, Glenn. And I've noticed that Shane Boomer, the Northern Lights coach, he's only actually got up off his chair twice. Once just then and about 10 minutes ago when Pryor had a free kick um, in a dangerous position. Whereas Alana Gunn, she is the complete opposite. She hasn't had a seat at all. So I think Shane would probably be uh, happier of the two coaches, but we'll just wait and see what happens here. Of course, this free kick is in a dangerous position as well. And it's not quite clear just yet. Ooh, slow communication breakdown there. Now, what's going to be a call there? It's going to be a foul free kick again for Canterbury United. Well conceded by Jenkins. I want to really capitalise on this. It's the third or fourth one they've had now. So uh, I think uh, Canterbury want to get the numbers in here. I'd, I'd be crowding uh, Lily Alfield a bit more if I was them because I think that, that's when it makes it harder for a keeper in this position. Go, 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 go. So this one's got to be put on the spot. Pretty decent. Cross in there. Play, and that's going to be a free kick as well against Northern Knights. Well, that's an interesting call, that one. Player seeding the foul is Chloe Not. Yeah, a bit unfortunate collision there, I think. Uh, more central position, so a bit quite dangerous. Uh, yeah, hard there, isn't it? A couple of hands up, but again, mainland in a good position. See what they've got up their sleeve. Jones on the ball again, seems to be the preferred dead ball exponent. Left footer, always tricky. Lily Alfield going for four on the wall, not surprising in the central position. Oh, 
So Jones is number six. She's going to take it. She's going to leave it for Fraser. Just couldn't quite get on target there, Macy Fraser. Not the preferred one after all. That was a good set play. It's good to keep things guessing. The opposition guessing. Lily again looking for the short ball, but uh, Canterbury not wanting to let them play out, wanting to keep the pressure on and have them uh, just pump it long, probably into the wind, maybe uh, back themselves to get it back pretty quickly. It's one nicely in the midfield, but it's fallen here for Savage. Bill Chris plays it forward, but well one not there by Hepburn and we Northern ball. So nil all after 25 minutes, 20 minutes to play in the first half. A couple of chances for the Northern Lights. Yeah, they've probably had more of them, haven't they? It still feels pretty even. Very much so. Very too much evenly matched teams. Their fitness levels look excellent, I've got to say. Both of these two teams as well as Rennie comes forward here. Gabby Rennie. Mnukovic looming in the centre. Well, it was good to see Rennie and Mittendorf there. Two teammates from the New Zealand Under-17 team going at it on opposite sides of the field here. You're yeah, coming on fitness. I think that, that'll last a while in this game, hopefully. The young players being conditioning well in the uh, Football Friends Development Programme. Space here for Maynard. It's a good ball. Vosper. Kelly Brown controls it nicely, and that's good defending. Good challenge coming at that time from Rebecca Lake. Yeah, crucial challenge there, really strong. Exactly what you want from your uh, centre backs. Nicely taken by Northern Lights. They're taking it quickly. Good pace to this game from them when they're on the ball. Let's drop, let's drop. Canterbury United defence continues to be quite strong. Yeah, a little bit impenetrable at the moment. Um, Northern are throwing them everything they can at, at Canterbury, but just seem to be coming up trumps at the moment and uh, countering pretty quickly. Well, earlier on in the season I touched on, it was a 3-1 win to Northern Lights here in Christchurch. That was back in October, but the last time these two teams met, just two weeks back, it was nil all. And we've definitely got the feel of two very evenly matched teams here. Yeah, it's certainly a battle. And, and Northern had their game last week uh, cancelled. Well, after half time, it was nil all. So that their preparation hasn't been as good as we see some pressure on Una Foyle. She's done well there to get it out to her left sided player. Fraser. Gilchrist, who's playing the 29th game today for Canterbury United. Has to wreck that time. But Savage has it for Northern Lights. Chloe not free, screaming for at the midfield. To reset. It's a good ball forward that time. Nicely controlled. Battle continues. They're having a great battle, aren't they? Pritchard here. Ava Pritchard, five goals this season. She's only 16 years of age. AJ for Pritchard, number 16 for Northern Light. Played in this game last year as a 15 year old. Hard to believe, isn't it? And, look, and looks like she's been here for years, I should say, as well. Throw from Mittendorf. Mittendorf. China was trying to flick it on, and the referee gives the United a free kick. Foyle with this free kick, the keeper for the Canterbury United Pride. She's on the 20s player. Yeah, she looks a tidy keeper, actually, nice and tall. 
which is uh, always half the battle as a goalkeeper. Lake it is, racing over to get that one for Canterbury United. Position set's pretty even at the moment, just slightly in Northern's favour, which probably isn't surprising. Well, they dominated position early, didn't they? But it's evened up quite a bit. Not. It's a good run. Oh, well anticipated. Wonderful interception. United on a roll. They sweep forward. Referee's playing advantage for Canterbury United. Mittendorf. Now we press, now we press, now we press, now we press. Now we press. I think it was hit there with that brilliant interception. Um, unfortunately, the ball forward was just a little bit overweighted, but um, could have had, um, maybe just hung on to it a little bit longer and, and found a target. Savage. Well won there, though. By Dominokovic. Really well dispossessed. She is again. Strong player, but she's lost the ball to right not. Right good luck taking on Chloe, not in this game. She's been very good. Here she is right on the ball here. Return from Brown. Ball, ball away there, Kelly Brown. Yeah, she might have had a couple of other options, obviously, I think, but excellent play from Knott. And before that, Mittendorf really composed, looked to go one way, slipped it through to Knott and built really well on that. And, and I think that's the way Northern need to go. So numerous under-age representatives for New Zealand playing in this game. Foyle getting some good distance on that one. Yeah, goalkeeper's dream this one from that yeah. end, I think. Yeah. Be quite you keen to have a punt. You would have loved it back in the day, Rebecca. Yeah, I need all the help I can get. <laughs> Brown and Gilchrist. Gilchrist, tall player. She's playing well in this contest as well as Maynard brings it down for the Northern Lights side. Barry. Well won there by Herman Watt. Really, that's strong defending from Saskia Vospa. Yeah. Very strong in the back, her and Bunch. Lake. Yeah, front on here is Dominokovic. Lake keeps it in the field of play just, but again, excellent defending. Has it gone out? It has. Well, that's unlucky. It, Savage and not ended up in a bit of a tangle and both on the ground and then left numbers a bit short, so they were lucky to get out of that one. Um, and unfortunately, I think the counter was on, but couldn't quite keep it in the field of play. Really liking the fact the Northern Lights are able to win these critical moments when Canterbury United sweeping forward. They seem to yeah, they've make been very strong. Plays. Yeah, they've been very strong, and, and Canterbury must be not running out of ideas, but sort of starting to get really frustrated. So, um, good signs here going to half time. Although I think one team definitely want to be up as we see uh, Mainland pushing forward. Lake. Byline just crept up on her a touch fast on that occasion. Yeah, Vosper had her under control there. I think she didn't get her a look in. It's a break early through Bunge. Tucker Lake, another very experienced player of Spider Age. Mittendorf. Savage. Race has got it, though, for Canterbury United. And what? Lake. 
Rini, it's a nice touch. Not even the great pace of Marissa Van der Meer is going to catch that one. Yes, yeah, a good move to get them in that position, but again, just out muscled by the Northern defence, so we're really standing up strong today. Now this is where Canterbury United can put some pressure on as they can try to bring it out from the back. With a strong wind. It's good pressure up high here from Canterbury United. And some good composure from Northern. Oh, is it going to fall for Herman Watt? No, it's the answer. And now Northern have space. Savage comes forward. Options up Kelly Brown. Chloe Knott on the ball now. It's not on the ball. Here's Mittendorf. Again, Canterbury United back in good numbers, Rebecca. Yeah, they are. I mean, they, um, they cleared the way obviously quite strongly there, but and had to get behind the ball pretty quickly. Promising surge forward from Northern, but well, there's not much in it. And just thinking about the stats, position, and uh, time in the, the opposition half are pretty even at the moment. Yeah, 53% for Northern, 47 for Canterbury United. As you'd expect with this breeze, Northern, slight majority of the game being played in their half. Yeah, the other telling stat for me is one corner in the half which um, went to Canterbury United so it's clearly a, a mid mid pitch wrestle Lake it's a good switch here comes Gilchrist oh. too much gas on that one Now's the opportunity, 10 minutes to go. Uh, each side or one side needs to really try something different here. I'd like to see uh, Canterbury in particular use the switch a bit more. I think they've had that option open for them a couple of times and they're still going up the middle. Bunch that was, now not. Now Mackenzie Barry. Again, skates on to get that one. Now Brown. Chasing down that one. Oh, she's got playing with good football IQ, isn't she? Very yeah. good chance. There. Yeah. Challenge coming in from Dominokovic. She is again winning the ball for Canterbury United. was Macy Fraser. There's Dominokovic there, the 12. Well, she's playing her 13th game. She scored five goals this season. Ooh. Debut season for Canterbury United. And every game this year. Free kick to Northern. Deep in their half. It's still an opportunity to get numbers forward. And some of their tall timber. Nice play from Lara Wall. Oh, yeah, getting in the road of that one was Savage. That was an important half stop from her. And Amir would have loved to chase that one. Now Brown. It's a tasty ball going forward here, and the one up front there by Pritchard. Really good go forward there from Northern. Good examples of touch pass, touch pass. You know, you make those yards pretty quickly and put the opposition under pressure. She is Ava Pritchard, the 16-year-old. Another chance here for Vosper to come forward and all this one in. will be a corner for Northern Lights. Come off Lara Wall there. Oh, 
Take it short. Back to Knott. For once, she didn't get a good connection on that one. And now a chance for Canterbury United to break, perhaps. Here's Rennie. Great taste from Rennie. back there for Northern. Five players. Great transition defence. Excellent transition defence. Enabled them to counter pretty much straight away up to the left. Which I haven't made the most of, to be fair, but um, the options were there anyway. But excellent tracking back. And Gabby Rennie, what a run. She managed to skin past the uh, left right-hand side defender there, making a real threat. Just pretty she couldn't quite finish with something a bit more challenging for Lily Uphill. And the end of straight into her hands, didn't it? Lucky little handball there from Gilchrist. Yeah, that's right, Northern setting up again. Get numbers forward. Five minutes or so left. Excellent opportunity here. Yeah, this match played in good spirit too. It's the one nasty challenge in the first half. Anika Mittendorf. The driving ball. Not challenged for though. No, Canterbury uh, had a free hit there. Oh, plenty of space in midfield here for them to move it forward. It's Hepburn dishes it off for Gilchrist. Boyle's done well there to come out and clean that up. Yeah, didn't have that pace, that back pass. <laughs> she was. <laughs> Unlike every other pass this game. Yeah. A bit of a stitch up, but she dealt with it well. Savage. Early cross. This is there, but it's fallen for Northern Lights. That's a good clearance. High bouncing ball off the turf. Yeah, difficult for these players to control. You just took the danger out of it when it was in the air, wasn't it? A little bit. Not. for another handball there, could have gone either way. Yes, she plays it long that time. Rennie up front again. North, good composure from her. Savage. It's back to Knott. This is Barry. Well, one in midfield by Maynard as she comes forward. Arabella Maynard. Again, a good, strong challenge coming in from... Talia Herman what? And that's a good ball. Now, Van der Meer is not going to catch up with that one. Uh, the English part turf won that one, unfortunately. <laughs> but that, that's what I was talking about before, that uh, switch I think is definitely on. Van der Meer ranges up and she's got some pace. So uh, I think in order to spread it out, Canterbury might want to have a look at doing that a bit more often. Well, one by Savage. Over, get across. Nice play from Lake again. Now, Caterby United may be one of the last attacks in this first half. Fraser. Osper. Fraser. Here's a chance offside. Flag goes up on the far side. Gee, there can't have been much in that one. And it was Dominokovic. Yeah, that was very tight. She's so quick. Just being told no additional time for the first half, which is very unusual, but not surprising. I think the ball's, uh, you know, this has been very little uh, or no delays, but. A lot of back and forth, and it's still a, a big wrestle. Fun 
Lynch plays it forward. Brown chasing it. That play from Jenkins, that's good. It's good play coming in from Vandermeer. She anticipated that one beautifully. She's just gassed that one too much for Gabby Rennie. Northern uh, start quickly again, going out from the back. That's a support under. It's Pritchard. Really like Mittendorf on this slip back position. She's very composed, number four here. Yeah, she's really calming influence and, and you know, with that throw and, and just the, the way she can play ball up the left. Oh, for a Huge. player so young as well, Rebecca. It's hard to believe, and the way she led in Montevideo in, in the 17s. Yes, yeah, Savage. Savage. Yes, yeah, Savage coming forward here. It's going to fall for Lake, who's not missed a beat on that side of the field either. Lake and Mittendorf, the left backs for both teams, have been very good so far. the last minute of the first half. It's been one of those halves, hasn't it, where it just hasn't quite fallen right for everybody, or it's run long, or it just snuck out over the line. Quite a frustrating half to watch, no doubt, to play, but um, I think we'll start to see some a uh, bit more push and shove next half. Still may be an opportunity here before half time for Northern. Oh, that's a dangerous bouncing ball. Not. Well, that's going to bounce Kylie for Northern in midfield. Canterbury United have plenty of players back, and there is going to be a handball. So a free kick just before the end of the first half. This will end the first half. Kelly Brown there, earning her team a free kick. Just a little, yeah, just a little flick up into the left hand. Unfortunately, if she hit it behind her back, as so many players do these days, it might have missed, but not intentional, but the hand uh, sort of away from the body. Yes, like, Whitney Hipburn was the yeah. player. Got Kelly Brown on the ball and potentially Jenkins. No, just Brown. Stay on the line, stay on the line. So Kelly Brown to take this free kick. He's going to Rex. And over the bar it goes. And that will end the first half. It's been a, a tight and tense first half. But these teams have largely cancelled each other out. Half time here. Canterbury United nil. Northern Lights nil. Well, we're at English Park in Christchurch. It's final, the grand final of the National Women's League for 2019. It's nil all at halftime between the Canterbury United Pride, the home team, and Northern Lights from the North Shore of Auckland. Good crowd here. These players be keen to get some action in the second half. A really good crowd, Glenn, and. and right behind obviously their own team but also really supportive of just the football in general which is is nice and uh, i'm interested to see what sub action we see this half i think that might be the difference is when when people introduce uh some different talent and um who that might be and Brittany lee nicholson's an obvious discussion point with that given that she's uh, second top goal scorer for the league but um she's not the only option for mainland but uh yeah, i think there's a couple Number 15 for Brittany Lee Nicholson. And uh, she's scored nine goals in the 12 games that she's played this season. So she could be a bit of a sharpshooter for Canterbury United. And these two teams, it's been very even 
I think I've seen a half a football. It's been that even for quite some time. Both teams nicely conditioned and keen to win the ball. It's not like either team is playing negatively either. They're both playing, trying to play positive football, Rebecca, but they're just largely cancelling each other out. They are, and, and I think maybe the, the uh, conditions are a little bit of a leveller as well, the, the pace of the pitch and the bounce and that kind of thing. So it'll be who, who comes up with uh, the best strategies to counter that. I think might get the early advantage. There's Canterbury United playing into the breeze in the second half. Still a little blustery, perhaps not as blustery as it was earlier. So that is a factor. I think Northern will be hoping that's the slight shift of the dial that just goes their way, getting the wind behind them uh, and, and able to put a bit more pressure on them that way. But of course, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes it's better to be into the wind to have some of those three balls hold up and not run away. So hard to know where it's going to go, actually. It really is hard to predict. Might just be a moment of brilliance from one of these players in the Northern Lights team. And it's the time of the be. games where I think they want their, their brilliant players to step up, don't they? And, and mainland have had Inley Longo in past years who's, who's really dominated some of the games. And, but opportunity for someone else to come put their hands up. Well, more than lights. Canterbury United earlier this season. Three goals to one. So Canterbury United have certainly picked up their act since October the 19th. So it was set here. The second half. National Women's League final for 2019. Underway and straight away Gabby Rennie looks to swing Canterbury United on to attack. Really impressed with Pritchard, number 16, another good player. Yeah, she had a big impact today. She's been really busy, quite involved, pinch possession a couple of times. Well, she arguably had the best chance, that header opportunity in the first half. A wonderful cross from Chloe Knott. She featured strongly as well. Pritchard chasing this one through. look to make something of this first couple of minutes of this second half. Yeah, I think they'll be wanting to extend that territorial well, just jump uh, stat a little bit. It's, it's pretty balance. much even at the moment. So they want to spend some time up this half of the field. Really turn the screws on, mainly. Well, it's good strong play there. Oh. Was fast, but just getting in the way and a strong challenge coming in from Bunge that time. The football ferns player Jenkins chases this one over. She's been fouled by Eddie Gilchrist. You could argue, uh, uh, not the worst um, foul in terms of um, intelligence. You want it up there if it's anywhere, don't you? But um, still, Northern have a good opportunity here to. Um, Canterbury uh, defence under pressure early in the first half, but, but probably more so. Get some numbers forward and, and see what can come of it. Well, they do push five players forward of the ball here. Sorry, Savage Sorry, just Sorry, sneaking Sorry. forward as well. Woo! Canterbury United have plenty back behind the ball. It's a nice play from Savage, swinging it wide. Oh, that could have fallen absolutely anywhere. And it's been cleared by Gilchrist. We just got a crucial toe on it there and deprived Chloe not the opportunity of smashing it home with her left foot, I think, unless the pitch just totally did it there. Well, that's gone off a Canterbury United player, has it? No, referee says goal kick. This was a dangerous ball inside the penalty area. Chloe Jones just getting that go. left toe to Get it. Yes. Vosper, space and time. Turned over and Vosper's got it. 
Maynard keeps it in the field, does she? Yes, that was a close call. No, in fact, the assistant, that's a late call from her. Did have a good think about that one, didn't she? I thought it was actually quite clear that it went out, but um, so the right was on the end. Arabella Maynard, just 18. I was still Milford player, former under-17s rep for New Zealand last year at the World Cup. There's a tasty ball for Rennie to chase through. And Rennie snuck behind Bunge. No one there. Rennie is just too fast for her teammates. She needs to find a way to hold that back and probably it wasn't an option for her. She's got some serious pace. Had to put one through there. Maybe could have cut it back if you're being really picky, but excellent uh, way to put pressure on. Just a reminder for the Northern Lights defence. Oh, keep your wits about you, especially if Gabby Rennie is hunting for the ball. She's certainly proving to be the dangerous player. Her reputation. Uh, describes and has had numerous opportunities. It's gone off for a chart. That Liz Savage, so it's going to be a throw in. United just happy to slow the game down for a moment. Foul on Kelly Brown. It's a one by Jones. Just motioning with her teammate there to come and meet it. She didn't quite sort of uh, pick up the vibe from her. It was unfortunate. They would have been uh, in a good position to move forward, as Northern are now. Prosper goes forward. So too does Jenkins. Chris it is. Takes no risks. Northern take that throw in quickly. Wall has won it nicely. Six players up, seven. And hovering around the penalty area. As Vosper tries to go long again. Razor. Oh, that's fallen for Brown. She couldn't get enough power on it. Oh, she probably had a little bit more time than maybe she thought then to sort of set herself up. But um, excellent. Good, good that you have a pot shot, you know, when the opportunity presents itself. Because often we criticise players for having too many touches, but... Excellent uh, pressure there from all of them. Cotton Hepburn in midfield. Now Savage. Good control. She did well there. Got rid of Fraser, but all she's done is play that right into the path of Van der Meer, who's away on this right flank. <laughs> Good defending again. I tell you, the player's positioning has been very strong. Claudia Bunge that time. They seem to uh, be there very early and, and just reading the game really well, which is making it difficult for mainland. Jones has done well. Again. Good job in that central defensive position for Canterbury United. Now, well, the lights have won a Easy turnover here, and that's a beautiful ball into the centre of the field. But again, Jones with a good play. Now, Knott comes forward. Knott, surging run. Oh, my goodness, that's close. Pritchard just couldn't get on the end of it. As it sweeps across the face of goal again. Brilliant ball here by Chloe Knott. I actually thought the goalie got a touch, but obviously not. Not 
Not has won the ball midfield there for Northern Lights again. Putting her hand up, having a very strong game. There's Gilchrist. Tries to go for, for Gabby Rennie up front. Barry. Vosper. And now Canterbury United have won a throw in. Becca Lake. Hepburn uh, dispossessed. Norell. Sindos sideline. Any big trends emerging for you so far in the second half? Well, I think both teams have definitely started with a bit more aggression and a compared to the first half that we've seen. I think they've both got a stern talking to. And Canterbury have come out looking um, the better of the two sides uh, from what I can see, Glenn. But Shane Verma is still wanting his side to press them and press them. So I think they're hoping they can turn it over in a dangerous position. So it's just going to come down to a small mistake, I think, either way. Yeah, I think that could well be the case. Just one little deflection from a challenge in a dangerous area, Rebecca, is all it could take to decide this match. It's definitely one of those games where it feels that way. Um, and, the, and the only sort of stat that is weighted heavily in one, in one place is, is Northern's the amount of time they've had in the penalty area, 17 to 4. So you think that amount of uh, pressure might start to, to um, reap rewards? Whoa, Dominokovic, that was a great chase by her. But again, no one in the centre to pounce on that, and that's a pretty decent ball for Knott, but she can't get there. Yeah, no, that one just curled away from everyone, including Lily Alford, Alford I think. Um, maybe the wind caught it, but end to end. Well, when Nikola Dominokovic has been in and around the ball, she's proved very, very good. Well, Canterbury United. Savage comes forward. Position here. A lot of those balls just a bit too strong, aren't they? Played by both teams going forward. Yeah, it's just, um, neither have really 100% adjusted to the pace of this pitch, uh, which must be frustrating and really wearing players out because they're doing a lot of chasing for nothing. It's a nice play from Vosper. Jenkins, good touch. by Pritchard. Mittendorf has had dispossessed by Rennie. Dominukovic is through and she's onside. Nikola Dominukovic. Yes! Dominukovic opens the scoring. Brilliantly taken by Canterbury United. And it's 1-0 at the home team. for their um, perseverance and sending her forward and, and some excellent pace shown here. I think we'll see on side when the ball was played. Just head down straight in. Took it away, which I thought uh, might have you know, just uh, made it a little less chance, but um, Vora taking the outside of her foot there. Lily Alfield cut the angle down as best she could, but in the end, it was almost underpaced a little bit, wasn't it? But rolled in and really well taken goal. Magnificently taken by Nikola Dominokovic here. Sixth goal this season. Perfect time to strike. Now comes in the 56th minute. So it'll be interesting to see how Northern Lights react to this. Yeah, they need to find a way, don't they, to get a get that advantage back or that parity back pretty quickly. Well, they are creating chances, Rebecca. I don't think they need to panic no, at this right. point. Tomanokovic, the goal scorer. Now it's in the feet of Herman Watt. Maynard does a good job. Now Savage. There's a handball on Macy Fraser. 
So some movement down the bench here. Might be Vabner coming on, number 12 for the main round. Foster. That's Pritchard who's got rid of her defender. Oh, she couldn't quite keep it in the field of play. Ava Pritchard. Yeah, there was a good chance there. I thought maybe a little more time to get under control, but probably was overbalanced. So uh, had to put it through. Fraser coming off by the looks. Yeah, Macy, going on. Yeah, Macy Fraser going off, and on comes Lauren Dabner. Dabner, her 31st appearance. One goal so far this season. Macy Fraser in the midfield will be replaced by Dabner. Fraser's done well. She's had a strong half, actually. I'm surprised to see that, but um, obviously, yeah, men have mainly wanted to make the most of this advantage. Some tactical reasons behind that. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Dabner's more of a defensive player. I don't know, sitting on a 1-0 lead against Northern Lights might be a risky strategy. Remember, Northern Lights are undefeated this season. Seven wins, five draws. If Canterbury United could go on a win. Very good, fine achievement. I need to inflict the defeat on the Northern team, but let's go back to back. It was a great throw in. It's a dangerous ball into the area, and it's going to be a corner. It's Talia Herman Watt who defended that one. Yeah, well, it's all just getting a bit more urgent now, isn't it? You're right, no one needs to panic, but it seems to be just a little bit more uh, in it now. And, and I thought Cadbury looked like they were trying to slow the game down a little bit, which is quite smart. But Northern have a corner here. They'll be wanting to make the most of that. And we do see a crowd of people around the goalkeeper, which is very tricky. And it's a good cross into and found the head of a Canterbury United player. It's been well won. Gee, that was a important stop from Maynard. Now that's been deflected off a Canterbury United player, but Foyle's got it. Hickburn. Nice control by Gilchrist. Getting in there, winning the ball for a team, and referee says play on. It just everyone stopped for a second. Everyone was surprised about that. Here comes Dominokovic again. That one straight in the hands of Alfair. To Mittendorf. Pressing forward. Quite find the target though. Yeah, Dabner got. Foot on the ball, and Van der Meer's one to throw it. Let's have a look at this ball, and now, I mean, easy in the end for Lizzie Alfield, but again, managed to slip through, didn't they? Pride, so uh, maybe a couple of holes showing now. Join Dominokovic coming into the game. She's got plenty of energy. Up, up, up. Fallen for Jenkins, now not. Jenkins is her target. And Nick Mainland has spoken about uh, closing Chloe Knight down a bit. She certainly seems to have had a bit more attention this half. That is a throw in to the Northern Lights. Now to play one to nil. Nikola Bopanokovic, the goal scorer. Heels of handball go unanswered. Goal coming six minutes back. Well, it's fallen nicely for the Northern Lights. Now they can, can they get a player into the penalty area right in front of the box? It's a shot. Yeah. 
has fallen. It's still there. And it's cleared away by Rebecca Lake. Well, it was rather untidy, Rebecca, but eventually it was cleared. Yeah, it looked like Una Foyle sort of landed on it a little bit. If you see it here, excellent ball come back. A couple too many touches there, maybe. Foyle goes to pounce on it and sort of laid an egg a little bit because of the, probably the hardness of the turf, but scrambled away in the end. And now Canterbury United, a goal kick. That wind continues to gust. It's picked a up, bit. hasn't it? Certainly just picked up in that last uh, couple of minutes. Northern Lights would want to keep Canterbury United pinned down this end of the field. Yeah, opportunity to press here, I think. Oh, and that's fallen for Pritchard. Pressure on Rebecca Lake, just a tad. Now Brown, who's dropped back a bit. Goes for goal. Oh, it's a cracking goal! Kelly Brown! Take a bow! Wow. <laughs> you talk about the wind gusting, I think she felt that behind her and just went for it. It might be a CJ Potts goal against Argentina a couple of years ago, though. That was a little bit further out, but... Brilliant opportunity taken there. Foyle, who's tall and made a good effort, just had no chance. We see this again, set it up beautifully. Excellent pace on the ball. Oh, Foyle could have done much more there, I think. Well, Norell, that was an absolute screamer. Well, we don't have Norell at the moment, but one all is the score. Get back to Norell in just a minute. Oh, she was. That's great goalkeeping. Bit of courage there now. Yeah. Now, what's going on? I think it's going to be a free kick here. I think they want to pass back. Exactly. But Airfield had no other option there, though. She had to control the ball. Tried to disguise it a little bit by saying, I just bumped it with my hands, ref. But uh, in the end, that's what has to uh, occur now. It's an indirect free kick, I believe. Inside the box. Well, it's... How do you play these? This is going to be challenging. We've got a bit of a conference with these Canterbury United players as to what they should do here. Yeah, well, the wall will effectively be on the line, so Northern can't get too much closer than that. And then Canterbury needs to decide whether they just drill it or play it out. And well, what do you reckon they should do, Rebecca? It's tricky, isn't it? I don't, I don't think Northern can commit everyone on the line, but then you leave some of the goal pretty much unattended, so that, that might be their only option here. But you have a couple of ones probably just wanting to break and shut down their dangerous players in case there's a layoff. You can see uh, number three there, Rebecca Lake, looming like she wants it. So Dabna over the ball here. Looks like to take a penalty corner, actually. Exactly. <laughs> Highly unusual situation. All the while, the goalkeeper's probably inside and through the whole thing, so it might, might be a good opportunity to go high into the corners. Go, go, go! It's hit, Ben! It's still there! survived they have or have they and it's still in really trying to fight hard for the ball for Canterbury United not gets rid of it and Northern Lights have survived high fives all round for their players well we wanted something different we just see the free kick here blocked by goodness knows who but uh try to get towed in a couple more times a couple of crucial touches away Dicey situation just unfolding, still there for the Northern Lights. Rennie. And that's gone out harmlessly now for a goal kick. Everyone takes a deep breath. Well, exciting action, Narelle. Yeah, it is, Glenn, and I'm glad you actually didn't throw it to me then because we would have missed all that unfold. But I just wanted to draw your attention to the sub that Canterbury United have made. Warren. Dabner. She was originally in the Pride squad when they were just getting going. She was a part of their two finals back in 2013 and 2014. She's been in the States for the last few years but she is back and she's desperately keen to make her mark on this final. Now that she's on the pitch, she'll get her chance but it is starting to feel like a grand final, Glenn. Yeah, it's sounding like it's got good energy in the crowd as well. It's just really lifted in the second half. 
two goals created. Now here's space for Arabella Maynard coming forward for Northern. This is Savage back to Maynard. Oh, great ball through here for Pritchard. Good great keeping time. from Foyle. Hepburn, it is controlling it. Excellent there from Foyle. Had to be big and brave and come out. Mittendorf, that was a lovely header from her. Not plays it forward. Here comes Jenkins. Northern really trying to bomb on here. Pritchard. Oh, it's an ambitious ball for Vosper. She might end up with it anyway. She has. Bit of a lone soldier, though. And she gets support from Barry. That's a dangerous ball into the penalty area. Oh, no connection there for Jenkins. She got it down the deck beautifully there, though. It's still got to be cleared by Canterbury United. Play from Northern. It, was, it looked like a bit of a speculator to start with from Barry, but in the end it was actually pretty dangerous. Osper takes it quickly. She's throwing her arms off this afternoon. Oh, it's a great play from Jenkins. Half clear away. Dabna. Well, she's done it. Is handed back over to Vosper. Not can't control that one. Yeah. This wind has really picked up a bit now into Northern's advantage rule. It's behind them, and uh, uh, I think it's going to start to play a bit more of a, a part in this game. You might see it um, much more down this end of the park. Yeah, I think that's a big call uh, that you've uh, got spot on there, Rebecca. Could really work out in Northern's favour. I know it's a good position to receive the throw in. She couldn't control it though. Dabner controls it nicely. And that's a great ball. Gabby Rennie on it here for Canterbury United. Dominokovic in the centre. She couldn't quite fight her teammate, but Rennie still has the chance. Yeah, and like last time Northern managed to get the numbers back in time and, and defuse that attack from uh, Rennie, but she's dangerous, isn't she? Again, not very strong in those one-on-one -on -one challenges. She's won it again. Maynard, oh, she's dispossessed. Gilchrist. Richard. Oh, couldn't get to that one. It's nicely brought to deck by Herman Watt. Dominokovic tries to find Rennie up front. Oh, that's fallen beautifully here for Maggie Jenkins. And now Pritchard, the 16-year-old, has had a fantastic game. Nicely controlled, almost controlled there by Jenkins. She managed to control that one. It would have really opened up from her in front of goal. Heels of a free kick all round go unanswered there. Oh, it's a strong challenge from Gilchrist. Brilliant play from Gilchrist there. Dispossessed, stayed on her feet, manages to uh, start the counter while numbers are committed forward for Northern. Good play from Gilchrist. Canterbury United have got field position now. Any movement here. Uh, each, each team trying to get the ascendancy. Or trying to control the bouncing ball. It's just uh, very hard for it not to be messy, I think, on the sidelines here with the bouncing around. Sure is half hard, but uh, might create opportunities nonetheless. Dominokovic. Oldfield has it. Yeah, she had to get up her line pretty smartly there, Lily. She uh, shut that down really well, as you'd expect from someone with her experience. But hasn't had an easy day. It's, the wind has made it harder. I think uh, some of the um, some of the balls through, she's had to defuse a couple of things. But um, all in all, not, not too bad. She's played pretty well.
This is Lake. Jenkins is creating more opportunities for herself as this match goes on, but for once she couldn't quite get it right. And that's a decent ball from Hepburn. Beautifully positioned there for Gilchrist to run on to. Savage. Jenkins goes long. Pritchard chases, and this could be a great ball, and Gilchrist was forced to concede the corner. It was tricky, wasn't it? The Una Foyle sort of thought for a second about coming out, probably made the right decision not to come, and then uh, in the end it had to be put out for a corner. It was probably the only option there, so it's back and forth now. Well, how much running has Ava Pritchard done up front for Northern Lights in this game? GPS track would be off the charts. Yeah, I think that might apply for both teams. I think there'll be some very tired bodies, and, and I wouldn't mind seeing, uh, I don't, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a short corner here, maybe looking at Kelly Brown out there again. Uh, Going to repeat her antics. That's been spotted now, though. Well, Mittendorf up there, Pritchard. This is Maggie Jenkins to take the corner. Whipped in near post. Couldn't quite get past the defence. Chloe not uh, trying to wrestle it back for Northern. Chloe not trying to tidy up again. It's the two number sevens go for it here, Rennie and not. Rennie happy to put it out for a throw. Northern still have the field position and they're really pushing some numbers forward now. Baspa. The throw in again. Still no subs made by Shane Verma, the coach for Northern Lights. It's only 17 minutes to play. Just a one sub made by Alana Gunn. Oh, Jenkins on target that one. And it is safely gathered. I Una foil. He wasn't quite enough pace on that to uh, to really challenge Una foil. Rennie. Strong defending by Bunch. It burned. Oh, that's a great challenge from Maynard. Midfield has been so even all game. Barry, strong challenge here from Hepburn. Savage goes direct. Is Pritchard on side? She's offside. The assistant got that one spot on. Yeah, by a long way, probably in the end. I think she thought uh, Liz Savage or probably not who would play the ball through was going to let that go a bit earlier. Unfortunately, missed time to run. But Position sets higher for Northern now, 58-42, so they are hanging on to the ball a bit more, though we're still locked at one all. So. Yeah, and they're dominating territory as well. It, I guess we'd expect that with the wind in their favour in the second half. Hepburn, that's lovely control. It's a good ball for Dabner. It should be a goal kick, and it is. Three Anna Maria Kelly, nothing... Escapes her too much. Very experienced referee. Good point about the subs, though, Glenn. No, I think uh, I think Northern might need to start firing a shot in that in that area soon. See something different injected into the game. So you see, well, all five of them are warming up behind the goal at the moment. So that would suggest it's still going to be some minutes away before Verma does decide to make a sub. Jones concedes the throw in. Goals coming in the 56th and the 64th minute. Both of them very well taken. Oh, that's Jenkins unmarked. Off the throw in. May have could have had a shot there from long range. Savage. This might. May not just couldn't find the touch. Well judged there. Bunge again. So strong back. Back in defence for Northern. Savage coming forward, right up the centre of the field. It's a great ball, a great ball for Pritchard. It's still there. Maynard. And it's wide. Some good defence. Excellent play by Liz Savage, showing her experience there. Just staying composed, playing the ball forward. Could have had a shot, but chose to pick out her 
teammate beautifully there i've got to say excellent defending you've got to say that too really strong challenge there from rebecca lake it did be a good challenge didn't it it did, it did. you could say maybe she should have shot a little earlier but i'm not sure she had the time as we see them another promising northern attack diffused by a clearance Let's give Osper takes a throw. Pritchard. The fitness of these players getting really challenged now as Foyle's got it. Yeah, right idea there. Just wanted to cut it back a little bit more. Kelly Brown, who was running onto it. Feels like it might be opening up a little bit for Northern at the moment. Yeah, that's for sure. It does have that feeling about it. And, uh, just the, the ball starting to land right for people. Mind you, it could happen at either end, so it's still not over yet. Well, exactly, and it doesn't necessarily mean, of course, that northern will score second sub is going to be made by canterbury united and on comes jada stewart a player that was in last year jada stewart midfielder two goals a season for her and she's taking the place of defender marissa van der meer who's out of the game another another one of the many promising young players and i think a good injection uh, by alana gum here yeah, Stewart likes to attack, so she's adopted more of a front-running position. So interesting little tactical change there by Alana Gunn. Yeah, it does look that way. It's uh, kind of throw away a throw, unfortunately. There's been some interesting throwing techniques this game. Obviously. Not sure we're playing foul throws, but anyway. No. I'll leave that to Anna-Marie Keeley. <laughs> Disappointed not to show her team kit possession there. Lake's going to take the throw on. Oh, 12 minutes to play, one all the score. It's been a very good game, women's football, the grand final for 2019. Did you see another uh, interesting interpretation of the throw in rule? Chloe Nutt looks to be in a little bit of trouble down here. He's taking a hard knock. It's uh, one of the few stoppages of the game. Well, it is, yes. I don't think we've had an injury stoppage at all in the game, which is right remarkable. No, the ref spotted some blood on Liz Savage's knee earlier and, and probably got, <laughs> thought I'd better stop that because they haven't had one yet. But it's it, wasn't it? Opportunity for a drink and um, people to have a bit of a breather, a bit of a talk. As we see the third sub for Canterbury, number... Yeah, 15 is on. That's Brittany Lee Nicholson. Nine goals. So it's Alana Dunn going, Alana Gunn rather, going all out attack here. So on comes Nicholson. Fo Futsal Fern player as well. And Lara Wall is out of the game. Yeah, clearly an attacking change there. Brittany Lee Nicholson will be wanting to add to her tally of nine goals and maybe uh, sneak up on Emma Ralston at 10. And still, Shane Verma yet to make a substitution for Northern Lights team. Maybe he's running extra time. Oh, that was a timely shot, just checking his watch. And the watch will read 10 minutes to play. recovered from that injury it's a strong play from Barry it's Vosper again countless throw-ins for her today good touch by Chloe Knott Jenkins well it's going to stay in the field of play Gilchrist tries to get rid of it Lake and there's a foul late challenge coming in there from Knott Marie Keeley being very clear to Chloe not and her expectations around that. There looked to be too much in it. But um, finals football, I guess you, uh, yeah, everything's on the line here. So everyone, everyone trying very hard. Sometimes you get that result. But uh, Well, it's been a very good game in that respect too. Very disciplined performance from both teams. Relatively low number of free kicks. No cards. No, not like the uh, Phoenix game last night. No one runs at the ref and screams at him or her. 
very different game. One of these two teams decide the come up with the big play to win this game in these last 10 minutes. The walk. Disagreement here on yeah. who's got the throw in. Bit of frustration. I think the uh, linesman signaled the other way initially and uh, was overruled by Anna Marie Keeley. We see. Ooh, Barry with a dicey a touch there. Just line Nicholson. Put off Lake, close to her shoulder. Now, hip burn. Dominokovic. Those days, isn't it, with the wind and the bounce, you get those nasty little handballs that no one really means to do, and they can be crucial. Still a bit scrappy in that respect. Lake, nice touch from Stewart. Good pass. Now this is good play for Rennie. Oh, strong challenge there from Mittendorf. Love that play. Yeah, corners a result, but really excellent angles by Stewart and Nicholson there, both that reverse angle, which is so dangerous. It was great play from Canterbury United and really good defending from Mittendorf. Just good football all around by both sides there. She's very promising Mittendorf just for 18. She is a football fern and waiting, sure. no doubt about it. She the new Abby Ursic. Here's the, the corner and it's not executed. Claudia Bunge might have something to say about that. But. Well, Narelle, seven minutes to play. What's your feeling? What's going to happen? Well, I mean, you touched on it before. Shane hasn't made a sub, and even the bench are looking at him thinking, uh, coach, they've got two striking options sitting there, though, and Chloe Bellamy and Nicole Cooper. Uh, they're still pretty young, though. Chloe's still at high school. But Nicole Cooper, she scored over 20 goals for her club competition up in Auckland. But it seems as though Shane just wants to play out with the players that he has on the field. So we'll have to wait and see. But as you see, Glenn, not long left. No, certainly not. Rennie is not winning a ball in midfield again, Rebecca. Mm, yeah, it's very... Standing game. Yeah, it's been so influential um, and really good to watch. For young players, people, you know, watching how much effort she puts in, it's a really good example. Jenkins, that's a good pass from Knott this time. One touch from Maynard. And Pritchard touches it four for Brown. Brown trying to win the ball. And she'll be conceding the free kick, Kelly Brown. It's hard like this. Unfortunately, she had to go for the ball, and, and it was just rolling, dribbling along, not as fast as the uh, Canterbury defenders would have liked, I don't think, and, and you know, waiting for Una Fall to come and get it. And yeah, you, can't, you can't sort of uh, criticise Kelly there for trying to get it, but um, unfortunate outcome here. we just see as it rolls through. Beautiful touch from Pritchard, wasn't it? Yeah, well, always from behind is always a, you know, you're up against it then if you're trying to convince the ref otherwise, aren't you? She lucky not to get carded there. I think so, probably. Yeah. Both teams taking the chance to get a, uh, a drinks break with five minutes to play as this player, Canterbury United player, gets a bit of attention. Let's remind you what happened at nil all at half time. And then Nikola Dominokovic, the decisive first goal, 56 minutes. 56 minute rather and for one minute oh, one goal to nil it was and then stunning strike from Kelly Brown from long range to equalize in the 64th minute <laughs> it's like Gilchrist is okay she's walking freely as she gets some more attention on the sideline she had a great game the Number five for Canterbury United. Yeah, she's been very strong for them. They won't want her off for very long. Particularly when they have no more sub options. She'll be back on. And 
Nicole telling her players to tuck in. She's obviously going to go along here. Probably not quite as long get, as she wanted. No, didn't quite get the distance. But Stewart touches it back for Hepburn. And Gilchrist is back on now. Jenkins, oh, she might have been fouled by behind by Gilchrist there. She was. It's a free kick here for Northern Lights. This could be in an interesting position. It is a dangerous position, and uh, we've just had the word three minutes additional time, I think. So, still plenty to get a result here. Yeah, six and a half to play. Lunge on the ball, it's going long. Out there locked at full time, we'll be going to extra time. Oh. Lunge plays it forward, Pritchard, in fact it was Savage, with an open header, and it's ended up falling kindly there for Foyle. Not the distance uh, Una Foyle wanted there as Chloe wins that. Oh, not wins the header. Oh. Managed Dominovich. to keep it in around the Canterbury player. Dominovic did a good job. Lake. Yeah, Northern Lights throwing. <laughs> Barry with the throwing. Oh, Monokovic, who's dropped back now. More of a dense yeah, interesting. De yeah. defensive position. Check, check my team list here to see if that was her, but um, yeah, obviously not up front where she was. Well, has, who's that fallen for? Pritchard, but she's got her back to the goal. Right there was right, the pass yeah. wasn't quite executed to Savage. Just couldn't quite get on top of it there to get the uh, the pace behind just to, to make it easy for Liz Savage to control or even get to. Northern still have the ball though. Rounds the target. It's a Maynard, and she keeps the pressure on. That's good play from Arabella Maynard. Door for that throw in. Brown wins it in midfield, but no one in the centre there for the Northern Lights side. Oh, that's Fosper. She's read that one superbly. Fosper. Canterbury United back in numbers, though. Fosper's down yeah, injured. Fosper's down. Unfortunately, just couldn't quite get the weight right to uh, pass it off to her teammate there. But excellent anticipation of the ball from um, Una Foyle. Looks to be a little bit of concern about Fosper. Yeah. Foyle trying to find a defender to run onto, but Fosper too clever to let that happen. But unfortunately, couldn't quite find Savage or it was Bunger. Well, it might just be a cramp, perhaps. She just seemed to fall over. Sounds like a Vospa. Oh, looks like they're testing a knee there. But I'm hopeful it's cramp. Up the hush over the ground is this. Uh, is this crowd? Just get a little nervous. Yeah, Northern must think they're in with a sniff here. They've sort of uh, had a couple of really, really good chances just recently, and the ball's been up the centre of the field quite uh, for quite a bit of the last few minutes. Actually, four minutes of extra time added. So again, plenty for each team to um, to change their score. Well, Possible looks to be walking relatively freely. That's good. Yeah. She will go back onto the field, Saskia Vospa. All rolled back for Mainland because they put it out due to Vosper's injuries. We're going to build from the back through Lake. Hillcrest. Okay. 
out there. Really composed. Monokovic, that's a nice header. Good control from Dabner. The play is Nicholson. Can't quite get there. Yeah, he's run away from her a few times. I think the wind's just drifting. She'll be frustrated with that. So three minutes to play. chasing for Ava Pritchard, but she's on her own here. Maynard in the centre. She's got some options. Yeah. Pritchard, Maynard. It's good play. Just held it up beautifully. Vosper, deadly cross maybe. Jones. Now it's been cleared eventually by Gilchrist. It's positive play from Northern Lights. Yeah, kind of a bit of a shame. Jenkins looked free in the middle there, but very uh, difficult to find that angle and uh, running onto it being off balance. Oh, Jones tries to keep it in, but it's going to be a corner. That nasty time of the game to concede a corner, isn't it? It's been only six corners in the game. Maggie Jenkins is going to come over and take this one. Yeah, looking to whip it in with the left foot. If there's ever a time in the nail a corner, it's now. It's Jenkins, it's putting it in there. There's a chance, it's been defended, it's still there. And it's cleared away finally by Hepburn. Now Gabby Rennie, and it's Jada Stewart chasing through for Canterbury United. And Kelly Brown is back there. Great job to get back there. Oh, nicely controlled by Dominokovic. Mittendorf plays it down to Arabella Maynard. One minute to play. Now Notch drifted over to the left. Three players forward as Chloe Not does a good job. For Pritchard again. Jenkins in the centre. All the lights have a throw in. Yeah, it was an excellent corner there, actually, and it was sort of blocked about three times, isn't it? Which has been frustrating. And Kelly Brown did do well. She's uh, obviously one of the players who hangs back for a corner as we see this coming in now. Yeah, two or three cracks at yeah, some excellent blocks. Well, it's flipped on into the penalty area again. Mittendorf. That's beautiful play from her. Well, it's been defended by Lake. She was. Tight finish here, tight game. So Mittendorf is going to stay forward. Northern Lights must yeah. just throw a couple of players more forward here. Not And Maynard hovering on the edge of the penalty area trying to clean up as Jenkins takes this quarter again. That was fast, but couldn't get a clean connection with her header. And that is going to do it in regulation time. It is finished. One all in the National Women's League final for 2019. We are heading to extra time. Dominokovic scoring in the 56th minute for Canterbury United. Kelly Brown in the 64th minute. And for the second straight season, these two are heading to extra time to decide the national title. Well, let's have a look at some the goal scoring highlights in the match, both coming in the second half, Rebecca. And this was magnificently taken by Nikola Dominikovic. Brilliant counter attack, well under control, and just nicely outside of the foot. Second post, I'm not, uh, easy to blast it in that situation try and you know power it in but just did enough to get past the keepers well executed and certainly the outside foot doing the business for Dominokovic her sixth goal of the season and then check this response by Kelly Brown it's interesting wasn't it no one was really worried about her out there and she's hung out there quite a bit this game so excellent execution there from Kelly Brown just probably saw that uh, foil was a little bit out of position but only just and really made the uh, 
the connection that counted there. Yeah, Kelly Brown with an absolute beauty. It was an absolute stunner. And it was interesting, she started up front for Northern Lights and she and Maynard switched positions pretty much for the second half as Kelly Brown occupied that left midfield spot. Yeah, it looked that way actually, which um, obviously worked for them because uh, she came away with a goal, but and, and a good challenge for Maynard to try and get on top of as well because they're both such dangerous players. Well, you've been in this situation plenty of times through your career, Rebecca. Uh, what do you want to hear from the coaches in this situation? I think, I mean, normally you just want to hear don't don't change too much, you know. There might be a plan, we might bring some subs on, but really just keep keep pushing, keep doing the basics really well. Don't lose, you know, don't panic, basically. Just hope that everyone uh, everyone's fitness uh, holds out. Look at some chances here in the second half. All the lights dominating. Possession with the wind behind them, and this one here, I saw this quite a few times in this match with uh, chances being created out wide. A couple of players not there to receive the cross. There's uh, Lily Elfield obviously snuffing out that what could have been a terrible back pass. Well, this was a close call, an indirect free kick from inside the box after a defensive mess up, but somehow Northern Lights survived. And there were chances at the other end of the pitch as well. He has some great defending. I think from memory, Una Fool is probably the only goal he's had to make a save when she came out and, and shut down one of the one-on-ones earlier. This one was right near the end. Those blocks were cruel, critical. Becca Lake getting herself in between the ball and the goal as good defenders always do. So one all. It doesn't look to be any movement in the northern uh, subs area. They've also got their bibs on. No one sort of uh, doing any touches on the ball, so I would say that no subs to come. So one all, not too far away from the start of extra time. Rel Sindos sideline, tense times. It is. I've just tried to have a wee listen into the team talk from Shane Verma. He's basically saying we've been here before. This is ours to take. Just trying to encourage the girls. But again, we probably will see some changes. But Alana Gunn, she's just telling her girls to just keep doing the basics well and see where we are after 30 minutes. But it does look pretty even and it is going to be hard to break that deadlock. Well, these two have had some great battles in the last couple of years, haven't they? And they're all just two weeks ago. Now one all here. Extra time for the second straight grand final. Yeah, very hard to split. And it's been this way for the last four years, as we've talked about already. So clearly the top uh, top two teams uh, going at it today. And um, Yeah, I, I think just from here, we um, what we want to see is how the... Uh, in my view, the senior players really stepping up and bringing something extra to the game, enabling the younger ones to maybe unleash some of their innovation um, and probably getting numbers forward, like really trying to put pressure on the defence. And we've seen one goal come from, from exactly that, just a, a big counter. And I think on this pitch and this, with this wind and as people tire, it's going to throw up some opportunities. Well, Shane Verma still making no substitutions. Playing his absolute faith in the 11 starters. So their fitness is going to be tested in these next 30 minutes. Yeah, look, I guess if the players are saying we're feeling good and he doesn't want to break up the combinations, then, you know, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, and it means he's got options <laughs> deep into extra time. I would say all his penalty takers are on the park might be the other thing, so... Well, that's another issue that could be looming, of course. Penalty shootout if we get no... Winner in extra time. Holly Knott has taken one successfully this year, at least one. There might be more. So she'll be lining up, I'm sure, if it comes to that. As we see uh, Northern Lights kick off in extra time. So extra time underway. Northern Lights playing into the breeze. Straight away, they're onto the attack through Maynard. Not. Stewart, as Canterbury United win the ball, hit burn. Monokovic plays it forward. Now Rennie, Nicholson chasing this one. The 
win behind them in this first 15 minutes. This is Canterbury United's time to strike. Yeah, it is. It's funny, it's died down a bit, hasn't it? But um, definitely um, an opportunity for that to occur. Conservative start so far, not surprising, but um, I'm sure it won't be too long before we start to see a bit more of an armory self. Stewart tries to flick it on. Well won by Savage. Nice touch, Pritchard. It's a good dish. Jenkins plays it forward and Savage stays forward. Now is that player onside? The flag has stayed down. But the pass to Maynard wasn't quite accurate enough, was it? No, it looks like just, just around past him was curling round, which is a shame. Nice one touch there from Mittendorf. Gilchrist comes forward now and has it for Canterbury United. Foyle. It was a good play from Foyle. Yeah, just uh, happy to pass it back. Nice and um, relaxed there. This one will go long, I think. Dabna. It burn. It's going long. I think possession's going to be really key. We saw that uh, when that increased for Northern, they created many more chances than they actually equalised. So I'm hoping that we see a bit more possession football, some uh, crisp passing, one touch, rather than um, lumping it forward and sort of launching long. The play's gone down behind the play here. It's Kelly Brown. It's been a bit of discomfort. In fact, that's Maggie Jenkins, yeah, Maggie in fact, who's gone down. It's Maynard, I'm sorry. Maynard, the player. Arabella Maynard. Okay, so maybe just took an elbow to the side of the head there. Looks like an uncontested drop ball. Northern Press really working hard to keep Canterbury contained. They managed to get out again. Jones oh. has just given the ball away. Now Jenkins, what's her pace like? Well, it's good, but not quite that good. It's a shame there. That press is really effective on that occasion. I hope it's a bit more of that. I might have deflected off. No, it hasn't, says the... Yes, it has. Yeah, I so. mm. Yep, it is a Northern Lights throw in. Oh, it will be actually a Canterbury United throw in. Dabna. getting rid of it. So Canterbury United now in the red zone. Maybe looking to take advantage of that. Dominikovic, I think, on the ball here. She's strong, isn't she? Good work by Northern, though, to uh, push them forward. Jones, that was a dangerous ball, as it turned out. No foul, has got it. Yeah, she did well there, because it would be quite tempting to rush out as soon as you see that ball bouncing, but given the wind and everything, she had more time than you think, so really good judgment by Lily Elfield. Hold on, hold on now. Must win, must win, must win, Bells, must win, Bells. Cut out by Hepburn. Target was Nicholson. gap between the northern strikers and, and midfield I think they want to close it down a bit because it means yeah they're struggling to get any forward momentum when they're in the ball it burned that strong play from her Abner Jones over the lake Asper it was 
for Northern Lights. Continue to be strong back there, the Bosper Bunge and everybody else combination. They um, really played well and, and only beaten by the counter that time. Great pass from Chloe, Chloe Knott. Yeah. Pritchard, Maynard racing forward in the centre there for Northern Lights. Pritchard finds Maynard back to Pritchard, but strong defending coming in there from Annie Gilchrist. In fact, it was Hepburn who drifted back into defence very nicely. So the point I was making before, even though they managed to hold the ball up for a very long time, there was only those two employing not sort of within Kui of it. So I just want to keep those units a bit closer together, I think, Northern to be effective. I say that, very tough when you're tired. <laughs> These players having to dig deep into extra time here. Looks at that's nice touch from Pritchard. It's Jenkins. Oh, Jenkins just couldn't find a teammate. Pritchard couldn't quite get there fast enough. But she's thinking I should have had a shot. <laughs> so hard though, it was the right thing if she'd found her, it would have just been a tap in. But um, yeah, unfortunately, just it passed a bit too much on it. Just wondered whether she might have been able to just play it onto her left foot there, yeah. Rebecca, and power it home. I actually thought that's what was going to happen. Um, it, you know, as I said, if she'd found the player, it would have been a tap in and, and you know, a goal would have resulted, which is um, so it's unfortunate there. But some good good signs here for Northern. How's that for control by Liz Savage? Showing her experience there. I think on this pitch in these conditions, you've really got to come at the ball. And, and there's been a couple of sort of heads poked forward and that kind of thing where it's been a bit tentative, but Liz, and she'll never be like that. And, and, shows when she gets control of the ball and sets them up. Not always seems to be in the right spot at the right time, doesn't she, Chloe? Not. She peels for the corner. And she's got the corner. Yeah, smart play there, actually. Started appealing sort of long, long before it had run out. And um, I think it well, obviously she was right. But prime opportunity here for Northern. So Savage comes forward, Mittendorf, Vospa. Takes this corner. Away from Debna. Stewart dispossessed Savage. Good tidy up by Barry. Mainly trying to commit numbers forward now, but no way through Barry again. Very strong. Ready to take the throw in. Jada Stewart. And unfortunately, Herman Watt. Quite get him onto the end of that one. Yeah, good skills, just not on the same page, unfortunately. Yeah, a strong play from her. It's a great ball to Dobanokovic on the back of this. Uh, just no power on the shot, Rebecca. Yeah, it was a great ball, great angle, and, and Dobanokovic probably only one of the very few players who would have got on the end of it with her pace, but you just really needed to push through, thump through the ball on that occasion and uh, easy in the end for Lily Alfield. Chances at both ends of the field for both teams in this first period of extra time. Herman Watt plays a great ball into the box again. Lake. Cleans up here for Canterbury United. Throw in for Northern is the call by Anna Marie Keeley, referee. Another player on the ground. Looks like it might be. Yeah, this, I thought so. Vosper in the distance again. It's the same left leg that looked to be troubling her earlier. We do see a sub jumping up and down in front of us.
Shane Verma is finally going to his bench. Saskia Vosper looks a bit in trouble there, although Jill Lily Elfield uh, looks like she's stretching out the cramp, so maybe that's what it is, but definitely looks like a substitution coming here by Shane Verma. It's the incident again. Ooh. Yeah, it looked like got a good knock on the knee there. Yeah. Telltale shake of the head there from Saskia Vosper. So it is going to be Talisha Green to come on. Forest Hill Milford player. She's finishing high school this year, is Talisha Green at Takapuna Grammar. She's going to get her chance in this National League final with Vosper. Player set to be substituted, the injured player. Yeah, Green, really promising young player, part of the New Zealand under 16 setup, I believe. But what a time to come into a game. Yeah, no pressure, eh? Well, I want something to tell your mates at school. I wouldn't want a, a national final for my team after watching most of it. So, big opportunity here. Oh, Vospa looks uh, in a lot of discomfort, so hopefully um, that is more cramped than, than anything else. It's a great shame Saskia Vosper has been one of Northern Lights' best players today. Uh, yeah, it's a huge game. Can't really criticise any player on either team. They've just given it everything, haven't they? Absolutely have. So Green is on. Primarily a defender, so she's going to slot to that right midfield position, which is where Vosper was playing on. So it's a straight swap, it seems, there with Barry still there, and she's throwing the ball in now. She's been right side defender right the way through. Probably not still there, and away comes Jenkins again. Does a great job to hold the ball there, and Brown was her target. Green gets her first touch. Barry going all the way back to Elfeld. Great ball forward. Was was a beautifully put on spot. Oh, here comes not again. What would you expect? Anything other than authority? What a pass! Now, is this the moment for Maynard? Well, I think she was ending up trying to find her teammate up front there, Pritchard, rather than unleashing a shot. Yeah, I think this time of the game, you want to, you just want to be pulling the trigger, don't you? Um, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, because she can't have been shooting, because you just sort of tapped it, so it must have been trying to find your teammate, but promising chance that went to waste, well, unfortunately. Just off camera, Arabella Maynard whacked her thigh. She knew, I think in hindsight, that she should have had a crack. Now, Brown puts pressure on the Canterbury United defence again. I think when those opportunities come up in a game like this, you've, you've got to really take responsibility, don't you? What a ball from yeah. Not. Well, she was passing it to... She was attempting a pass there to Pritchard. He was sneaking through on the right there, but... A low percentage one, unfortunately. Exactly. Well, the corner has been conceded by Canterbury United. So Northern Lights continue to ask questions as we approach the last couple of minutes of this first period of extra time. And swinger. Yeah, Jenkins, push, hasn't push she done well? Wow. Taking these corners. Oh, it's deflected off a Canterbury United player for another corner. Jenkins is going to have to wander all the way over to the other side of the field. Just touched on her corner taking. It's been spot on the whole game. It has. I was, I was hoping that um, and it did get, get past the uh, near post because I think that's a bit, bit easier to defend. Um, but if she can put them in with the pace she has been, they'll be very difficult to deal with. Yes, deflected off Chloe Jones. Oh, Jenkins off the left foot. Yeah, post the target this time. Now, where's this going to deflect? Oh, 
Two minutes of added time in this first period of extra time. Also there, Mittendorf rule to have brought the player down. Jones and Gilchrist. Canterbury United now, Herman Watt. Ball cool player, that's nice play from Bunch. Hepburn has it. Now Dabna, she's been useful since coming on. Dominokovic. Dominokovic plays it in. And Barry, it deflects off her for a corner. Yeah, Dabna thought, so appealed to Marie Keeley there, thought she'd been interfered with. Um, brought down, uh, Keely rightly sort of played on, and a corner result. So again, back, back at the other end, aren't we? And uh, mainland looking to assert the dominance here. Last minute of the first period of extra time. This is Nicholson. Got to be cleared by Northern Lights. Is there a chance here for Canterbury United? Another corner has been conceded. Yeah, Northern, I want to do a better job at clearing it there. I think uh, Lily Alpha probably having a word to her defenders in her very polite way that she does. But um, yeah, they want to do a better job because you can't sort of, you can't keep having um, this sort of pressure mounted on. Nicholson again from the corner. Oh, it touched nobody going through and it's gone out for a goal kick. That is a hideous ball to defend. <laughs> what a great corner. <laughs> And one of the mainland players has been down in the box. And Rebecca Lake, I think. Another real hero. This game. Puts her body on the line constantly. Yeah, she certainly led by example. As have, I was going to say, both back lines in this game have been uh, very strong. That will do it for the first period of extra time. We are down to the last 15 minutes of this National Women's League final. It's half time and extra time. It's one all. I say all the players still look pretty fresh. They do, don't they? Yeah. Oh, it'll be 19 or 20 again, eh, Rebecca? I kind of remember it, but <laughs> it's a quick turnaround and uh, straight back in. Uh, you can sort of see, I think, the desire for all the players. They just want to get this done, get the job done. It's been an excellent standard so far, and, and often in these games you see the, the fitness or lack thereof starting to kick in, but not so much here. As we see this ball through now again for Chloe Knott. Yeah. Probably had an opportunity to take a shot there, I think. And maybe not as confident on the left foot, I'm not sure, but um, certainly, I think, as I said earlier, you've got to take responsibility. That's, you know, you're, you're up there to try and score goals, and um, sometimes it's just what you've got to do. Yes, that's the best chance of extra time so far. Another sub is about to be made for Canterbury United. Chloe Jones is coming out of the game, the central defender. Kate coming Taylor. on is Kate Taylor. The New Zealand under-16 representative. For a 19th game for Canterbury United. Straight to the back line. Yeah, that's a like for like replacement. So Canterbury United kicking off there into the wind, remember, in this last 15 minutes. Remember, if we're deadlocked after this next 15 minutes, we go to a penalty shootout beside the National Women's League champion for 2019. Yeah, I expect to see Northern uh, actually stamping their ascendancy in this half because of the wind and um, a bit more seniority in the team. But uh, anything can still happen. Canterbury's certainly uh, proven that they can um, pinch one when, when the opportunity presents itself. So uh, be a big 15 minutes. Mittendorf with the throw in. takes no risks. Long throw again. Oh, no, is it? 
Yeah. Is that where he is? Come off a, uh, that was a weird angle, wasn't it? But uh, anyway, it's going to be a corner. Ninth corner of the game. Henry United have only had four. Yeah. I think it's we do see the difference in, in this time in, uh, in the penalty box as well, in the 18 yard box. Here's Jenkins with the corner. Over Bunch's head. Fine green, and there's not from long range, and that will with be a go. goal kick. Yeah, with go, I totally agree. Press here. Green up high now. A little bit of pressure on Mikhailovic, but uh, she's done really well there. Rennie's dispossessed. Straight into the action there is Taylor. Substitute. Play from here. Canterbury United, that's nice control from Stewart. Oh, this has got to be good, but it's Nicholson who couldn't control it. Alfield taking their players in to go long. Scoot off the boot. Yeah, tough done there for Leisha Green to control. In fact, it was Arabella Maynard. Didn't quite bring that one down to the turf. with the throw in. Oh, no. oh, has been Anokolovic has been fouled by Alicia Green. Well, the subs up can slow them very well, don't they? Yeah, oh, yeah. Take her down, unfortunately. I wonder if Mainland might see that as a bit of an opportunity. There's a boss for having to come off, but um, Green's... Uh, uh, Looking to be a very strong player. Taylor to take the free kick. Whoops, it's gone slightly behind the players, not positioned nicely by Taylor. Makes it easier to defend when the players can come forward. Yeah, I think she might have wanted a bit more curl on that, or some curl. Probably. To the second sub from Northern. Yes, it's going to be Pritchard who's going to be checking out of the game. What a marathon effort she's done over Pritchard, but she's going to be replaced by number 14, Lily Jervis, who comes onto the field. The Forest Hill Milford product. Started out as a striker, a defender now. Yep, and she's occupying that spot up front. And then Belvan Norton coming on for mainland to replace Herman Watt, I think, for the looks. Yes. Bell Van Norton also spent some time playing for Auckland a couple of years ago. Very experienced player. So Talia Herman Watt is out and in comes Van Norden. No mucking around. Oh, play dangerous ball forward. Well, a lot of subs on the field now. Well, one by Savage. Maynard. I think that player might have been in an offside position. Now, is Gilchrist going to keep this in the field? A play she's done brilliantly chasing back there. Didn't want to concede the corner. Great commitment is Jenkins. Looks to play a dangerous ball inside the penalty area again. Hepburn, another throw in for Northern. Lucky not to get a nasty deflection there. It often happens off the shin pad in those situations, but tidied up well. Green, good long throw in. Jervis the target. Not. 
Savage now not. Oh, she's going backwards at the moment now. Barry. Just deflected off a Canterbury United player. Green with a quick throw in. Taylor. Kicks it to St Albans. Green with the throw and Jervis with the flick header. Dangerous flick. No one there though, and that will have just slightly hurt Shane Verma, won't it? The yeah. coach for Northern Lights. <laughs> it's very irritating. And I don't blame him. There's times like that at this stage of the game where you actually need everything to be hoovered up. Barry. Oh, Dabner has got it for Canterbury United. Now she's created space. Could come back there. No, it's going to be a foul. Yeah. Looked like a foul on first first look at this uh, from this angle, but really good play there by Dabner. Created so many problems. And Keely is reaching for the card for Mackenzie Barry, the first yellow card of the game. So, and reunited now. Swing plenty of players into the penalty area. That's it. Nicholson takes the free kick. Too easy there for Lily Adfield. She's uh, not going to be troubled with that. Really needs to bring her teammates into play there, Nicholson, unfortunately. And uh, Northern able to come away. Although, Jada Stewart has something to say about that. Just oh, totally. The savage. Nicholson, back to Stewart. Well, Stewart a little unlucky there. Yeah, I thought so. Could have gone either way, probably. That just looked more like an accidental collision. Yeah. Canterbury crowd unimpressed with that decision. Players forward for Northern again, looking to uh, create an opportunity for them to stop this from going to penalties, which is looking more and more likely by the minute. Sure is seven minutes to play. Here's Brown, the goal scorer for Northern. Mittendorf. Hasn't put a foot wrong in that left back position today as Taylor intercepts the ball. Gilchrist. <laughs> Mittendorf comes forward. I wasn't being able to control by Maynard. Such a high intensity, isn't it? I don't think it's uh, slowed down at all. I think it's probably picked up since <laughs> extra time started. Which is a great credit to both teams. It really is. Been fighting hard from the opening whistle. It's never let up, which is a good sign. What a wonderful challenge from Bunge there. Now, knots in space. Jervis up front here. Chris. Tries to find Nicholson. And a player is down on back play. It's Claudia Bunch. Took over the captaincy of this team when Vospel was injured. The it's an interesting then. time, isn't it, Rebecca? This has happened here. Five minutes to play. Just gives a chance here. Didn't look to be too much in that, did there? No, it's just a. Uh... Yeah, definitely time contact, really. Just... Well, five minutes to play. Players taking the opportunity to just have a breather, have a drink. Now both coaches, Verma and Coach Gunn for Canterbury United. I think it's fortunate it's not steaming hot here today. Uh, this turf will be one of the hottest in the country, in my opinion. Right? When it is sunny, um, it can be you know, five, ten degrees hotter on there. But a bit overcast, that breeze is... You and I have just put, put jackets on, but um, yeah, so it's probably just uh, playing into the players' favour a little bit at the moment. Uh, 
and seeing them through to this uh, extra time. Well, Norell, five minutes to go. It's going to come down to a thrilling finish. It is. I mean, just notice how quiet that the crowd have actually gotten here at English Park. I mean, I don't think anyone really wants to see penalties. It's not nice when the final was decided that way. But, I mean, huge respect to both of these clubs. And it just goes to show you that they can't be broken. They're both very, very good at what they do. But there are a lot of tired legs out there today, as you can see into the final five minutes. I mean, what do you guys want? Do you want pens, Rebecca? I feel like you would. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, when they come, there's always very exciting. always want the yeah. shootouts, don't you? Yeah, exactly right. Um, but I mean, I think probably I, I want a result because I think it'd be unfortunate for someone to lose this game on pens. Another substitution. This is Nicole Cooper coming on. And uh, Claudia Bunch, who just saw get injured, has come out of the game. It's a big loss. It is a big loss. This is the unlucky armband. Mittendorf has off. just got the armband. I've just seen Anika Mittendorf take the armband. So she now takes over the captain. Third captain that uh, Northern Lights have had in this game. This is that. Lake. Cooked us straight into the action here. But Gilchrist, again, another very fine defender in this game. Yeah, none of these uh, the defenders, like I said, they've all been strong. None of them look bothered. Any any sort of pressure that comes their way, so they can deal with it. Instead of that, when Claudia Bunge played for the football fans, like she'd been there for years. Cooper. Oh, she's given that away, and Gilchrist is just quite happy to concede the throw in. Yeah, I don't seem bothered about that. Three minutes to play. Green with the throw in. Here's not. Double team though, and she's been dispossessed. Savage, Jervis gets her head on the ball, and it can't be kept in by Cooper. It was nearly brilliant. I, I, I'm going to say that was a speculator from the Savage, but um, yeah, that's very dangerous in the end. Hepburn, Savage, nice hitter. Maynard can't control it, Hepburn has it. Gabby Rennie is the target. She's had a quiet second half, though. Haven't really seen her outstanding pace. Good from Mittendorf there. Really strong. Read the, read the ball well. Gives the team a chance to get back behind the ball. Taylor with a throw in for Canterbury United. Last couple of minutes of extra time. Unless something miraculous happens. We're heading to a penalty shootout. Maybe Jenkins can provide that moment of magic for Cooper. And Taylor, who's again come on and contributed strongly to Canterbury United's defence. Jenkins. Stewart. Canterbury United throw it as we enter the last minute. Two goals in this match coming both in regulation, both in the second half of regulation time. Shane Verma trying to get his players to uh, push forward. Boy. Here comes Dominokovic again, but she can't catch that ball. Sounds like one minute of additional time. This is the second period of extra time. Good touch. Beautiful play from Maynard. Uh, Hepburn. It's a good play, good hustle. Good pressure on the player in position as Jenkins. Oh, that touch. That last touch, if that was on the money, she would have been through. Now could open up for Dortmund. It's a good ball for Gabby Rennie to chase. Jervis is back in defence now for the Northern Lights as we have two minutes of added time to go. She might have wanted Lily Affold to come and get that, but uh, probably not, not the best in that situation. They find themselves on defence again, two minutes to go. Nicholson with the throw in. Thank 
Oh, she almost gave up there. Nicholson disappointed. Lack of movement maybe off the throw in there, Rebecca. Yeah, look that way. Um, yeah, you think when you come into the game late, you probably want to get involved as much as you can. Maybe we're being unkind. It's easy go to play game to play from the sideline, I suppose. But uh, as you see, Northern really from Lily Airfield wanting to mount another attack. Savage just hoists it down the field. Cooper did well to hang off that one. Taylor. Just tries to win it for Canterbury United. It's Van Norden. Nice play from her. Into the last minute of time. Oh, dig it in. Uh, she can't keep it in. Can Rebecca Lake, the captain? Green wants to take it quickly, and she's done so with Jenkins. There's a little push. Not much in that one from Gilchrist. Not much contact, but there was enough there to concede the free kick. Northern really need to make the most of this. Make sure they put in a ball that's uh, going to cause some real problems and that finds the likes of Savage and Mittendorf, who are uh, very strong in the air. 30 seconds to go. Jenkins, whose crosses have asked questions the whole game. She's got to do one more here for Northern. And the Four Northern Lights wanna... pitch the game. Here's Jenkins. Oh, it's gone out off a Canterbury United player for a corner. I think Flo might have wanted to put her defenders a bit higher there as uh, she was getting a bit snowed under, but it didn't matter. Corners come of it, and we're in a similar position again. Jenkins. Uh, it's been cleared away from Canterbury United. And that is going to do it. We are off to a penalty shootout. To the side, the National Women's League champion for 2019. Full time and extra time. It's finished one all. Yeah, I guess a fair result, though. It seems a shame that someone should lose on pens today, but um, it's a, what a tussle it's been and some brilliant football played. Fitness has been outstanding and it's uh, been difficult to fold. Now comes the interesting time about who's putting their hands up, which teams are prepared for this. So, this is exactly a replica of last year. What a... Uh, I feel like we're trapped in 2018, Rebecca. <laughs> Does that mean we're a year younger? Yes, yes it does. Definitely. So, two goals scored in this game. Both came in the second half, and both were magnificently taken. Check this pass out here. Tremendous pass to Dominokovic, and she made no mistake from here. Yeah, quite an individual goal in the end. Did a lot to do. In one of those situations where if you're trying to thread it through to a player, not that there's one there, so that was 1-0 after 56 minutes for the home team, and then Kelly Brown with one of the goals of the season. Yeah, my man just gave her too much time on the ball there. She's got a, a good enough reputation that I don't think you can leave her alone for like, like, she, like they did then. So unfortunately paid the price, and, and here we are at penalties. Well, those two goals coming in the second half, and again, great credit to both teams. I think they both pushed the ball they both defended very well they both pressed well it was uh, i think a good solid performance from both teams rebecca it was and, and the stats sort of slightly come out on more than side but you've got to put chances away don't you if you um want to nail home results and and really i think 45 55 percent across most of the stats is it's not that dominant so i'm not surprised we're here where we are Northern have uh, subbed off a couple of their senior players, which means they're not available for penalties, which might um, might be a concern for them. But uh, most of the strikers are still on, so they should be the ones stepping up. Well, Norell, have you got your, your $2 coin? You're going to flip it? 
Lynn, you couldn't pay me to take a penalty. I really feel for the girls and the keepers who are going to be in the spotlight here very soon. I mean, there's a lot riding on this, but two very experienced keepers and some, some great shots we've seen, especially Rebecca in the warm-up. They didn't hit us at all, so shots on target. They were practising penalties. So, it's yeah, it's going to be a very interesting last few minutes here at English Park, but I think the crowd are up for it now and the sun's starting to come out. So, perfect finish the Sunday afternoon football. Well, perfect finish for one of these teams. <laughs> I'm just not, uh, I don't think we, any of us are prepared to make a call on which team is going to come through here. No, that, that's very difficult. I mean, evenly placed, good number of penalty takers. Both keepers are good. Both keepers, I, I imagine, will be pretty excited. Good opportunity to uh, make a name for yourself, pull off that save that uh, secures you the title. Okay, so ladies, we're here. This is the line, okay? We need to start on the line. Yeah. Okay, before we clip, if you one foot, fine, two feet, not fine. Okay, she's right there, she's going to watch Just here, uh, Anna-Marie Kiley giving the goalkeepers the instructions, no doubt about nailing their feet to the line, like we saw in the Women's World Cup. They're very strict on that. If you come off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Then, you're, then, you're, then you're going to stop with somebody else. Then that could be a new thing. Lily getting some extra, extra clarification, which is good. Which is good, very good referee. So it is going to be Canterbury United to take the first penalty in the shootout. And well, the captain's leading from the front here, Rebecca comes Rebecca Lake to take the first penalty. Yeah, excellent leadership. She's had a strong game, a strong season, so I'm not surprised to see her stepping up. <laughs> see if there's any gamesmanship here from Lily Elfield. Maybe in a chat to Rebecca, asking her which way she's going to go, but Lily's quite polite. I doubt she's doing that. Remember, Elfield is a current football ferns keeper. So here we go, penalty shootout. Rebecca Lake. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, Lily Alfred went the wrong way there, uh, which, you know, it is always 50-50 guess anyway, but really well taken by Lake. Liz Savage steps up. Yeah, right inside the post, it would have been difficult to stop anyway. So Liz Savage comes forward now, one of the more experienced players in this Northern Lights team. Yeah, good to see that actually, both Liz and Rebecca are very experienced. Una foiling goal for Canterbury United. And there we are, a one locked up at one apiece. Same result. Belle Van Norden for the mainland, one of the, I think one of the last subs. Very good striker. She hits a very good ball. So almost a replica of the first penalty. Yeah, it would have been very difficult to save anyway. I'm really glad to see the older players stepping up because often he runs up in the other way <laughs> in these situations. But not today. One apiece. We could be here a while. We could be as Bell Van Norden. It's Van Norden. Elfeld and goal. It's 2-1 to Canterbury United. Frustrating for Lily Elford there. Went the, went the right way. She would have felt a good touch on her hand, but unfortunately just a bit too much power from Belle Van Norden. Oh, wow. I'd like to have that one again, wouldn't you? Yeah. So 2-1 in the shootout so far. And here comes Chloe Knott. What a game she's had. Experienced penalty taker already this season, but yeah, she won a round off the game with a finish here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Wow. First advantage goes to the home team. Yeah, you've got to feel for Chloe here. You just leaned back on it and uh, launched it, unfortunately. So Canterbury United, after two penalties each, have a 2-1 lead. Now Lauren Dabner comes forward to take the next one. 
very particular setting the ball. Lily just making sure it's in the right place. There we go, some gamesmanship finally. She's got a compass out. Well, that's fair enough. Yeah. Canterbury United will get crowd or the pride of get crowd are giving her a bit of stick, but makes it all about how to take the penalty, surely. Calm down, keeper. So here comes Dabna. Looking to give the pride a 3-1 lead. She's saying she moved early here. No way. Oh, she's been carded. Oh, this just gets more interesting. Oh, that's harsh. See, once she's picked it, I can take my feet off it. I don't have to keep my foot in the line. I bet you you don't see it. Yeah? So Deb has been asked to take it again. Well, what's going through Dabner's mind now? She just had that penalty saved. Yeah, and it wasn't a great penalty either. Actually, she wouldn't have been happy with it. So Dabner tries again. Yeah. And this time she buries it. That's a good one. That's the best penalty of yeah, the contest, that one. Textbook. Side netting is always a good, good sign, isn't it? Well, Jenkins comes forward now for Northern. This is almost must get for Northern Lights after Chloe Knott's miss the last time. Lights player was on the spot. Big deep breath for Maggie Jenkins. Well there, Maggie yeah. Jenkins. 18-year-old, big nonchalant. moment in her career. So three to two, it's still advantage to Canterbury United. Each team has two penalties left. I think Lily's got a save in her, I do. Should be pretty annoyed about the last one, but um, yeah, pressure on uh, Kennedy, Canterbury here. So all Canterbury United need to do is these next two is put them in the net and they win the national title. This is Brittany Lee Nicholson, the substitute, with the fourth penalty. Yes, it's four to two now. You'd have to say it's Canterbury United's pride's uh, move to match point. Another well taken penalty there, Rebecca. Very well taken. All yeah. gone to the keeper's right, pretty much. So four to two. So Kelly Brown comes forward here. She must get this in. Otherwise, Canterbury United will be the national champions. The second straight year. Deliberate approach to the ball from Kelly Brown. Kelly Brown, one of the stars of the New Zealand Under-17 team at the World Cup in 2018 to keep her team in the contest. Yeah. Kelly United have got the national title again. I've got to say, brilliant save there by Una Foyle. A good composed penalty taken by Canterbury. these penalty shootout defeats for the team that doesn't get the jackpot. But there it is, the final score, one all. But Canterbury United win the title 4-2 on penalties. Yeah, it seems a shame someone had to uh, come up second, but you've got to hand it to Canterbury. They took the penalties well. Brilliant save at the end by Una Foyle. And uh, had a good, good performance today. So uh, a deserving one, as I would say. Well, 
nothing to separate these teams really and you have to feel for Lily Elfeld she did save one penalty but it must have just been a hairline decision I thought it was pretty close and uh, yeah very unlucky because it, it wasn't the greatest penalty and then, and then she buried the next one so um, I mean you're already at a disadvantage anyway as a goalkeeper aren't you but the rules are the rules so uh, and that's how Anna-Marie Cayley saw it and in the mainland prevail yeah they do so Canterbury United pride well they capture yet another title it's their fifth title since 2013 and they remain an absolute force don't they in women's football in New Zealand yeah they've been so consistent you've, you've got to say that, that that's not going to change and we've got the titles to show for it now so but I mean both teams have just been so dominant all year this is the first loss Northern's had so hard to separate them for sure well actually if you want to be technical about it Northern Lights have gone through the entire season undefeated and they've still not won the title that is a tough tough position to be in but congratulations to all these players and the coach too, Alana Gunn and the rest of the management staff. Let's. Let's get some reaction now. We've got Norrell with the winning captain. Thanks very much, Glenn. Yes, Rebecca Lake, congratulations. Back-to-back -back champions. How does that sound? Oh, it's just amazing. You would have seen us celebrating just then. It's, yeah, amazing. We're so stoked. But also well done to Northern. It's really tough to lose on penalties. And, yeah, it make, makes winning this so much, so much more important because we really put up a fight to win it. Because the first half, you started a bit slow. What was the words from Gunny at halftime to really get the match started? Uh, yeah, it definitely wasn't fitness anymore. You had to bring a whole lot of heart and strength, and I think the girls did that amazingly. And you've been with the club for six seasons, I think, winning many championships. How does this one stack up? Oh, it's just amazing, especially to captain the side, and also having the respect from all the girls. I am only 20, but everyone respects me, and it's just amazing. We've got a really good culture going in this team. I know it's a Sunday, but what are the plans for the celebrations? Um, we're definitely going to celebrate, but I think everyone's yeah, pretty tired, so we'll have a chill one, I think. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much. Congrats on the win and enjoy the night. Cool. Thank you very much. Well, congratulations to Rebecca Lake. She had a wonderful match too. And here's Kelly Brown, just a replay of this last save. Yeah. Really good save from yeah. Foyle. Picked the right way and absolutely nailed it home. <laughs> what great scenes that are. Wonderful stuff for the Canterbury United team. Let's get some more after-match reaction with Norell. Thanks, Glenn. Yes, I'm with Northern Lights captain Saskia Vospa. Commiserations on the result, not what you wanted, but what did you think of the performance as a whole? Um, obviously, all the girls um, fought their socks off. There was, like, two of us that went off with camp. Um, people at the end just couldn't really stand up. But, yeah, we did fight our hardest, and it was really unlucky that we went out in the way that we did. Because you had a lot of chances, but you just didn't manage to take them when you needed to. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. That is how the game kind of goes, but next year we'll definitely come back and fight. I was about to say, you've built a pretty extraordinary rivalry with Canterbury, so obviously come back better and hopefully stronger. For sure, for sure. There's always next year, um, and we've definitely got some young'uns coming through. So coming back, you'll see us in the final next year. Thanks for your time. See you next season. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a great attitude from Saskia Vospa. And uh, she handled the moment there very well, didn't she? Yeah, <laughs> both look like pros and uh, you know, have a combined age of about 40. So, um, oh, that's right. Yeah, good and, uh, to see, really good to see. Well, goal scorers in regulation time, or normal time, Nikola Domanokovic scored in the 56th minute. Kelly Brown, wow, she had a mixed day, didn't she, with uh, a brilliant goal in regulation, and then she had to go through the heartbreak of missing that penalty at the end. So a real uh, swing for her in the game. Well, Canterbury United's goal scorer in regulation time was Nikola Dominokovic, and she's with Norell right now. Nicola, congratulations on the win, and to get on the score sheet must be nice, and really taking the game through to penalties. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I can't explain the feeling right now, and uh, all those all those missed breakaways in the season really um, 
yeah, it's so worth it to make one in the final and love to do it with my team. It's so cool. You've had an amazing season so far. What do you put that down to? I really, lots of the girls have said it, but we really do just like love being together, love showing up to training. It's not a chore at all and we're here because we want to be and it's just such a good family. I've only known them for a few months and I just feel like I've known them forever. So yeah, it's just a tight knit group. It's real cool. And your coach Gunny, I mean, she looks like a player herself. What's she like as a coach? Yeah, absolutely a player. She could jump out there if she wanted to. Um, she's just, yeah, I've actually never had a coach like her before who always has something positive to say in the locker room even if we had a terrible first half always positive it's really cool always keeps the the energy good yeah i really appreciated her this year well thank you so much and congrats on the win enjoy the celebrations thank tonight you thank you so much appreciate it bye well nikola dominokovic there wonderful goal scored for her team and there is uh, alana gunn congratulations to her too she's she was a real energizer bunny right through the uh, through the game and uh, it really was a great coaching performance from her too. I think we're all set for the presentation. Here we go. Ladies and, Ladies gentlemen, and gentlemen, we are we now asked for your attention for the awards presentation for the National Women's League final. It's my pleasure to introduce New Zealand football CEO, Andrew Pagnell, New Zealand football general manager of football, Daniel Farrow, and New Zealand Football Competitions and Events Director, Kevin Ford. New Zealand Football would like to acknowledge all of the teams that participated in the National Women's League in the 2019 season and thank all the supporters who have come out for today's grand final. The Golden Boot in the National Women's League is one of the most coveted titles during the season and this year was no different. The winner of the Golden Boot in the 2019 season was Emma Rolton who scored 10 goals for Capital Football. <laughs> Emma can't be here today to join us but please uh, thank you for your round of applause for her. The other highly sought after player award for the National Women's League is the most valuable player, which goes to the player who performed consistently well across the season. The winner of the MVP for the 2019 season was Auckland captain Stephanie Skilton. She can't be with us today either, but thank you for your applause for her. No match is possible without the match officials, and today we present commemorative medals for the referees of today's fixtures. Fourth official, Nadia Browning. Assistant referee, Alice Clipson. Assistant referee, Eloise Welsh. And referee, Anne-Marie Niley. And ladies and gentlemen, the runners up for the National Women's League, led by their captain, the Northern Lights. I'll ask you, boss, but just getting here. Middle there, the captain. Oh, Northern Lights actually went through three captains in this game. The Vosper getting injured. And then her replacement, Bunge, getting placed. There's Annika Mittendorf. What a fine prospect she is for New Zealand football. She's got captaincy written all over her. Chloe Knott. Well, she had a fantastic game, but missed a penalty. Yeah, Rick unfortunately, Chloe, Chloe's had a, a huge season, and, and I, hope, I hope she doesn't dwell on that too much. But you're right, a lot of this Northern team are full of, of stars that we'll be seeing for years to come. Though, uh, there's a lot of players in here that are going to be end up being full New Zealand internationals, absolutely no doubt about it. And who knows, a lot of these Northern Lights players in five, six years could be scattered all around the world with professional contracts, Rebecca. I mean, that, that will be the aim of New Zealand football, to really let those players flourish.
Oh, well, exactly, and that's what's happened now. We see Michaela Moore, Nicole Stratford, others who played in this in, in the recent years and, and they're off uh, overseas playing their trade. So definitely the, the goal for some of these players, no doubt, and, and there's no reason why they won't achieve that. It's hard to take uh, the runners up middle when you get within Let's have a round of four the whisker of winning. Runners up the Northern Lights. A great game of football. And now, please join us in welcoming the winners of the National Women's League final, the Canterbury United Pride. Well, Rebecca Lake brings her team forward to receive their winners' medals. In a short time, she'll be hoisting that trophy. A hugely, hugely proud moment for her. You heard her when she spoke, you know, a lot of emotion and, and Lomonokovic as well. Um, they a really, really proud team and clearly will be together for times to come. Well, that was interesting seeing Lake go right down to the back, wanting the, the team to get all of their medals first before she gets hers. A courageous performance from a lot of these players today. Macy Fraser, Lauren Dabnett, bringing her medal forward. Jada Stewart about to get hers. Chloe Jones. Yes. Omanokovic, the goal scorer. Wonderful moment for all these players and uh, and the keeper, of course. Una Foyle. He saved the penalty to complete back-to-back -back titles. Well, all the medals being handed out by Andrew Pragnell, the CEO of New Zealand football. Of course, exciting times for New Zealand football if they can win the hosting rights for the 2023 World Cup. Joint bid with Australia, formally lodged late this week. It'll be a big deal for women's sport in New Zealand. Oh, uh, we've got the Women's Rugby World Cup coming in 2021. And if the Women's World Football Cup comes in 2023, that would just be spectacular. Yeah, and I expect we'd see a lot of these players here today competing in that. Absolutely. That's a good point. There's Alana Gunn getting her. Winners medal is the coach of Canterbury United Pride. And finally, the New Zealand uh, football CEO, Andrew, Andrew Pragnall, will hand over the National Women's League to the captain of the Canterbury United Pride, Rebecca Lake. So Lake gets her medal. And now it is time to celebrate. A oh, great moment for Canterbury football. Yet again in women's football, they are dominating women's football right now. Yeah! They are the winners of the National Women's League for 2019 on the penalty shootout. It's the Canterbury United Pride. Well, that wraps it up here from English Park. It was a, a great game of football right the way through with both goals coming in regulation. An exciting penalty shootout going Canterbury United Pride's way four goals to two. We hope you enjoyed our coverage here on Sky Sport today. On behalf of the entire crew, have a good afternoon. Okay.
Your mama gave you put on your dancing shoes. Give me some. 